the NFL season is so so close. I can almost so taste. I could taste the Gatorade in the air. I could taste the disappointment from Cardinals and Jaguars fans all across the country, and I could taste the saltiness of everyone that has to play against the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. But it doesn't matter. It's the best time of the year right now. This is episode 50 of the 4th Long Podcast, and it's one hell of a throwback because not only do we have a new face on the show, joining Alex Croft, but we're dropping his Ayo. football knowledge and hot takes, but also for longtime listeners, as in the ones I've watched the very first show, our first show was a little over a year ago, and that was the 2019-2020 Anvil Season Preview. So now we got the 2020-2021 for the 15th anniversary. What's better? What can be better? To to say that I'm honored is the understatement of the year. I mean, to be on this show for the first time, the 50th show of this podcast, and you invite me on this I mean... What could be better? And well, also, it's hardly an invite. You kind of just sent me some nasty texts and like blackmailed me. But well, I mean, it's debatable. Here, here's the thing: is like some people don't know what's good for them until it comes, and I, th- I think that's the case here. And and let me just reiterate: this is the time of the year. Let's just everyone take a pause. If you're listening to this, just take a pause. This is the time where, in six months, when you don't have football anymore, there's just nothing on anymore. You're gonna go, dang. Remember when I was listening to that fourth and long season preview podcast and we had all of the NFL to look forward to? That's where we are right now. So just bask in that moment and enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Oh, you cocky son bitch. <laughs> Let's get into our predictions. The first one we need to talk about, though, before we get into the nitty gritty, is talking about the general advantage or disadvantage that a lot of teams across the league are going to have now since. No fans or limited fans for at least the first few games. And the league has just come out with a mandate saying that all stadiums will pump in crowd noise at 70 decibels. Not 71, not 69, unfortunately, but 70. And so, Alex, your thoughts on what this is going to do to the competition level of the league? You know, I mean, this is, you know, like the cliche phrase of 2020, unprecedented times, but I think and you know an undercover advantage that some teams are going to gain from this is this situation is going to create less variance in the league and it's going to make sure that the better team is going to win a majority of the time you don't have the fluky third and two you have you know you're you're in New Orleans, or you're in Kansas City, or you're in one of these stadiums with very very high energy, or you're in Atlanta noise. where they already pump in fan noise. Exactly. You're not going to have those built-in advantages and you're just going to create a more even playing field where the better team is going to win a majority of the time. So I think this benefits a lot. Those upper echelon teams, the the Chiefs, the Ravens, the Saints, the Niners, I'm not going to say the the last team because I'm going to save it for later, but those top top teams are going to have a huge advantage because the lower teams are not going to have that that caked in three point advantage that Vegas likes to give them of a home field advantage. They're just not going to have that to to start off with, so they're just going to be already behind the playing field before they start. That has a hundred percent great point right there, and that's something that we're going to be looking into as the season goes through. Hopefully, knock on wood, without any hitches or any anything bad, because I got my fingers crossed, and I honestly cannot take any more disappointment this year. Otherwise, I think I might just lose it. Straight exactly. Up. I've just decided I'm gonna think I'm gonna forget about it. It doesn't happen. It, it doesn't affect their lives anymore. <laughs> and football is immune to any virus. Yeah. What what virus? Football is football is its own thing. I didn't hear about Unstoppable. it. Unstoppable. But the first thing we're gonna start things off with is our preseason NFL power rankings. So we're gonna go from five to one, obviously, like how we always do on this show. And the crazy thing is, is I'm such a nice host. That normally it's just me giving my power rankings and everyone else just reacts to them. I even allowed Alex to come up with his own list of power rankings. So and, and this is just the type of host you are. You allow me on this show for the first time. On your 50th show and you allow me to go first and even make my own list. I mean, what more can you ask for out of a host? So without further ado, I will you're number start five with team. number five team, the New Orleans Saints. Mm. I think that something has to be said for continuity for a coaching staff 
and the quarterback to be on the same page consistently. And that just creates such, such a high floor for your team that the Saints are already starting with, I would say, a floor of 10 and 6. I mean, I, I can't imagine I can't imagine a case in which the Saints don't win 10 games, mm -hmm. especially with Alvin Kamara showing up to practice yesterday. Michael Thomas is coming back. I think Emmanuel Sanders is a sneaky good addition. They do have young receivers, Tra Traquan Smith. Um, you know, Michael Thomas is there, obviously. He's an all-world receiver, a perfect receiver to complement Michael Thomas is Emmanuel Sanders. He's going to do all the underneath stuff. He's going to do a lot of stuff in zone coverage. Drew Brees is the perfect quarterback for this system. Alvin Kamara is going to come back to his 81 catches, which he's done the last two previous years. If he's on the team. <laughs> Okay, what's he was practicing yesterday? He's, I have a, what you think. I have a hundred percent faith he's going to be on the Saints. I agree, and and I think that Sean Payton knows that he's an extremely talented running back. Exactly. And I think he knows that he needs him for this system, especially. He fits and, so I well. Mean, Drew Brees is no spring chicken. No. There's a reason that the Saints don't have an over the top guy. No. There's a reason that they have guys that are shifty, quicker than fast, as Mike Mayock would like to say and can get open underneath. And Sean Payton is a genius at creating matchup advantages. And Alvin Kamara is the epitome of a match field, or a match field, a, a backfield mismatch. And go. Drew Brees is gonna be the guy to get him a ball. I really like that. I appreciate your point on Emmanuel Sanders being a sneaky good pickup because that's something mm -hmm. I've been trying to say this whole off season. Emmanuel Sanders, when he was in, when he was in Pittsburgh, he was good. When he was in Denver, he was a key to the offense and that Super Bowl winning team. When he went to the Niners, he was a solid acquisition for them. And now with the Saints, he's going to be another guy because he has never really been the wide receiver one on a team. He's always been the wide receiver mm -hmm. two. And he's always excelled in that role. He's not going to be the wide receiver one in New Orleans because he already got a top three wide receiver there in, in can guard Mike. But he's going to be the guy that has gone less defensive worrying about him. So that's going to open up more for him. And if anything, he's going to be the downfield threat this year. Yeah. And, and I think there are always is an added bonus of you can never have too many adults in the room. And Emmanuel Sanders is an adult in the room. Mm -hmm. he's he is going to come in there. He's a professional. He knows how to get the job done. He's won he's a been Super Bowl. He knows what it's he's like. He's won a Super Bowl. He, he's been through injuries. He's switched teams. You just saw that. He got traded midseason to a Super Bowl contending team and elevated that whole receiver room. Almost Ebo won another Samuel, one. <laughs> Ebo Samuel was not the type of receiver he was at the end of the year in the first eight no. weeks. No. The, the time when Emmanuel Sanders went into that team and started to mentor Debo Samuel is when you saw him take off. And I think Michael Thomas has – he is an incredible receiver already, but you can never have too many adults in the room, and Emmanuel Sanders is that. No. And now my number five is going to be a team that I was enjoy that I enjoyed last year. They had a decent run in the playoffs. They ended the regular season on a bad note, losing the last two. They could have been thirteen and three. They are in one of the toughest divisions in the league. But it's a team that I still have a lot of confidence in, and that is the Seattle Seahawks. I like their offense. I like how they're starting to rebuild that defense a little more. There's no, it's no longer the Legion boom has it been for the last couple years, but they're doing some good stuff on that defense. Unfortunately, they're going to take a hit because they're likely not going to have Jadavian Clowney as he will. If the rumor is is that he's the Saints are pretty hot on him, so we might see that might be even better for the Saints on and they're somewhat underrated defense but I like Pete Carroll I like Russell Wilson and I like what they're doing I like the culture they have there in Seattle they know what it takes to win they know what it takes to be good that's why they're my number five and I think that you can take off the one of the hardest divisions in the NFL completely off say because this hardest. is the hardest division in the NFL mm -hmm. and the I think the only division that comes close is the NFC South and that's just because there's, I think, three offenses in that division that are extremely good. But the NFC West is top to bottom, the deepest division in the NFL, and it's probably the most top-heavy division in the NFL. Both the Niners and the Seahawks have a chance 
to be in the Super Bowl this year. And I think everyone's also just suddenly forgetting that two years ago, the Rams were in the Super Bowl. Exactly. They were a couple possessions away from winning a Super Bowl. Now, and I'll... Sean McVay, all of a sudden, he, you know, he, he's a great coach. Everyone, you know, took off that, that you know, the, the hot new coach label because he had one bad year. But, you know, this is one of those things where it, it's not going to take that much for them to, to win a couple more close games and get to 11-5. and five. Might take a better quarterback. Who knows? But we once we get to our brackets – I may have three teams from the NFC West making the playoffs. Might. Wow. We'll see. Wow. We'll see. We'll keep you hooked. We'll keep you hooked. Seven, the seven NFL teams making playoffs from each division hey, is going to come into play here. That seven made a huge difference. My number mm-hmm. four team is the New Orleans Saints. Uh, for your points, and also I just want to emphasize, and like I said, their defense is better than what most people give them credit for, and especially if they're able to ink Jadavian Clowney for at least a season. That is going to be the best defense in the NFC South. Maybe one of the best defenses in the NFC. Hands down. I mean, another thing that, that kind of goes goes under the radar with the Saints is that they have an X factor every single game in Taysom Hill that, I mean, Sean Payton's not a dumb guy. No. He wouldn't sign a guy to a multi-year deal that in is a fairly backup big quarterback. Money. Yeah, fairly big money. And also... If if anything happens to or to to Drew Brees, you got a guy that led the league in in, in touchdowns last year, and Jameis Winston, or not led the league, but he was he was a, a thirty plus touchdown guy in year. passing yards. Led, yeah, the league led the league in, in passing uh, yards. interceptions, but We're not gonna the talk about eye that surgery. Part. Well, no, he got the eye surgery, so he's yeah, MVP now. I mean, Jameis Winston is on a Hall of Fame track right now. If you look at <laughs> if you look at the stats, if you ignore <laughs> just if you ignore completely ignore the turnover part, but. <laughs> They have a guy similar to Teddy Bridgewater last year that can take the reins for three to four games, can give Drew Brees a spell if he needs it. Taysom Hill in that playoff game was one of the most dangerous weapons on the field, and he just has another offseason to scheme up more and more ways to use him. I think this offense is just going to have too many options to fail this year. And we'll see how good I think they're going to do and how good Alex thinks they're going to do. Like the rest of these teams in the power rankings, at the end, stick around because we have our playoff brackets and Super Bowl winner. Now, you're number yes, four team. It pains me to say, as a, as a hometown Niners fan, but I you think homer. the Niners are the fourth team in my power rankings because, look, look, everything last year went exactly according to plan for the 49ers. They had an extremely easy schedule. Mm-hmm. They had very good success at the front end they were good in close games i mean that saints game is the epitome of it if george kittle wasn't an absolute monster they're not winning that game well, that the saints game and then when they were playing seattle and had that really I mean, close inches one. inches mm-hmm. inches mm-hmm. give them two wins i mean it, it's a completely different season if the niners get the five seed completely different they got to play an extra game they don't get home field advantage I you know you know it's Jimmy just G has game. to be on the field for one whole game extra game. All right, let's <laughs> let's just stop with the Jimmy G. He's still I mean here so here's the thing with Jimmy G. Okay. People don't give him credit for this. He's still not a very seasoned quarterback. He doesn't have that many. He's uh, he's got under well, before he signed 40, the, the 40 games contract. under his belt. Yeah, what what five games? He had like six games six. in the belt. Six. So he has a season in six games. Crazy, yeah. crazy. And, and the, here's what I like about and, the Niners is that I like the Shanahan. scheme. That's that's you took the words right out of my mouth. Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan will not allow this offense to be bad. I mean, I'm a Broncos won't. fan, so I have to show love for the Shanahan's. You know, of course. And I mean that zone running scheme with guys like Mostert, guys like Tevin Coleman, Jarek McKinnon. Don't get me started on him. I've been hoping that he was going to be good for the last two years, but he finally seems healthy until he gets hurt week one. But hey, you saw in the playoff run, those running backs carried the Niners to so much exactly. playoff success and dominating success. I love and the Niners. And what's, what's great is that George Kittle, the best blocking tight end in the NFL, hands down. Mm-hmm. The best yard after catch tight end in the NFL, hands down. Who did they draft in the fifth round? They, or they drafted Charlie Warner, another blocking tight end. Correct me if I'm wrong on the fifth round, but they, they drafted a late tight end, Charlie Warner, who's going to be another blocking tight end so they can run that 12 personnel and just impose their will on defenses. And 
the NFC West is not known for great defensive lines. The only real good defensive line right now is the Rams because of Aaron Donald. Mm -hmm. When the Seahawks lose Jadavian Clowney, they're going to be able to punish people in the trenches. And if you look at that defense as well, that front that seven. defense that front could seven. be the best front seven in the NFL. Nick Bosa is going to have another year to develop. His, hey, his Nick talent. Bosa you might be coming Javon... up somewhere else in this uh, preview too. Hey, let's let's not spoil it for the listeners here. But Jav- they, they bring listening. in Javon. They bring in Javon Kinlaw. They have yes. Dre Greenlaw. Yes. They have Fred Warner. Yes. They have Quan yes. Alexander. They have all these guys and. I think one of the biggest things about their defense, you keep Robert Salah. How do you keep a guy who flips the defense on its head, becomes an incredible defensive coordinator, and nobody picks him up? The you Niners get, are st- so lucky. Bass, who's getting interest? Stole I was shocked. Robert Salah. I was shocked. They stole him. That no one was there. It, uh, the, the Niners are something. That's why, Alex. That's why I have the Niners in my number three spot. For for those reasons. Oh, uh, okay. okay. But Let's... you're because also I still want to give them respect. They they made it to the Super Bowl, defending NFC champs. They deserve. I'm okay with that top three. I still want to give them the pedigree. They were a play away from winning the Super Bowl. They were a play away with and if Emmanuel Sanders got a good ball to him, they were they might have won that Super Bowl. So yeah. your number three team though is a team that I. Hate they just missed my list in number six, but they are a team that could surprise a lot of people, and that to the dismay of NFL fans around the world, mm-hmm. they could be good. And I'm a little here's the thing as worried. as a Niners fan, and, and the, the great thing is, is I I wasn't a part of those early generations where these two teams really duked it out. But what is going to shock people this year is I think that America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> might have the best offense in the NFL. How do you year. say that with the straight like how do you say that without gritting your teeth? Because Practice? there's No, there's there I mean I, I've convinced myself, maybe I'm crazy, but I've convinced myself that this Cowboys team, I think they have better weapons than the Chiefs. They don't have a better quarterback. Don't even get me started on that. I think they have better weapons and especially with uh, Dr. Duvernay Tardif leaving the Chiefs this year to, to be an incredible human being and go fight COVID on the front lines. Yeah, tons of respect to that lab. I think the Cowboys have the best offensive line in the NFL. They're back think it's having close. the best offensive line I in the NFL. I don't think it's close. That's why the, the thing that I, I'll, I'll, at least the thing that I've always loved about the Cowboys, my favorite player of all time is the GOAT lineman, Larry Allen, the beast. Okay. Of Larry Allen. Go. So I love that guy to death. And so that's why I have always may not respected the team, the coaches, hell, definitely not the fans, but I've mm-hmm. always respected that amazing offensive line that they've always traditionally had because, man, there's nothing better than seeing five dudes working in use and, and just just being nasty and dominant. And that's the thing. And and, and this, this goes back to when the Niners were making their big runs with Cap. They built that team on the offensive line. They they drafted Mike Yapati and I'm I'm blanking on his name, the the, the left tackle, not Joe Staley, but they, they drafted another left tackle mm-hmm. in the first in the first first round that year. And they just pounded people in the trenches and they had such an advantage up front that they made teams quit throughout the year. And this offensive is exactly matter. Why do you think do. Quinn Nelson yeah, is inside a, out? Is at the least Quinn Nelson is at least a top ten player in the league. I might sound biased as offense line. Quinn Nelson is a top five player in the NFL. <laughs> so, Quinn Nelson, I'm ne- I, I will never argue with you. The best left guard in the game, the best right guard in the game, Zach Martin. I love Zach Every Martin. Every thank you for single saying that. year. He is an incredible Bro, imagine offensive how, lineman, and you and you just get Tyron Smith on the left side blocking Dak's blind side. It would be unfair if you had. Quinn Nelson on the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, could you imagine? I mean, but but here's sure. also the thing. And the thing I'll about the Cowboys, this, though, yeah. I'll I'll save this point for the other the other okay. uh, the other segment we're going to get into okay. later down the road. But the Cowboys have an incredible embarrassment of riches on the offensive end. Mm-hmm. Their defense got significantly better. They brought in Everson Griffin. They. Great move by Emerson Griffin. They, they have they have Demarcus Lawrence. They have Dontari, but they brought in Dontari Poe. 
Their linebacking core is incredible. Leighton Van Der Esch, Jalen Smith, Sean Lee might be the three best backing tandem in the league. I mean, it's 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 very hard hey, to keep all three I got you. Even of those more guys healthy at the same time. Shout out to my Boise State Bronco. Boise State, Ooh. baby. I mean, it's going to be hard for them to stay healthy, but if, if that's they a scary can healthy, front seven. They are absolutely scary, especially – they just got hot. Clinton Dix, my open up space for, you know, a little Earl Thomas action. They said yeah, they were uninterested, it, but I don't believe that for a second. I mean, you can never believe anything Jerry Jones said out of his mouth. And, and we're not even mentioning, they just they spent their first round, another first round pick on a corner out of Alabama, Trevin yeah. Diggs. They, I mean, the, the secondary is not good. No. Let's, let's just mm-hmm. give them that. But the good thing about the NFC East is that the Eagles – they don't have a receiver anymore. They literally do not have a receiver. Their only receiver right now is a former quarterback from Houston, Greg Ward. What are you talking about, bro? They got Deshaun Jackson. He's not washed. Um, come on. He's not washed. Once <laughs> once Deshaun Jackson has another controversial tweet, he's going to be cutting that team. I mean, let's just – let's make that very clear right he's, now. Alex so, Kropp, breaking news. Deshaun Jackson, <laughs> one tweet away from being retired. That's he's one tweet away from getting cut from that that uh, Philadelphia. Eagles he's team. one tweet away and from being kicked out of the league by Roger Goodell. He's one tweet away from being one tweet away. I mean, you got to watch out for Deshaun Jackson. Put at your least... Twitter notifications on Deshaun Jackson right now, <laughs> please. But at least you now with just... our one and two, we agree with yes. this. We we do agree with mm-hmm. this. We hardly agree with anything else the rest of the time, but we do agree with this. It'd be and weird if we did agree on these things. The Ravens, obviously, the top two offenses in the league are the Ravens. Uh, 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 I disagree with that, but... Uh, okay, at least public perception-wise, okay, <laughs> the top two offenses in the league and the top okay. two leaders for in the MVP race currently are the Chiefs and the Ravens, and that's why the Chiefs for both... or the Ravens for both of us are number two, Chiefs are number one. Your defending Super Bowl champs are the best team going into the NFL season. Why do you still like the Ravens so much? You know, I don't. I don't think we need to to spend too much time on this because it's so it's, obvious, right? It's right there. You have, I mean, Lamar Jackson last year. You would if you showed me all the tape on Lamar Jackson, you wouldn't say he's a good passer. He's that's his weak spot right yeah. now, and we know that he's just a playmaker. He led the league last year in touchdowns, right? What uh, from his games. first year, like the last games, especially the, the playoff game against the Chargers in like the wild card round, I believe, I was worried about, and even my my Ravens fans, they were worried mm-hmm. about him. But last year, oh my, mm, he just okay. lit the entire freaking league on fire and blew everyone away. Pop quiz for you, Mister Ross Allen. Pop quiz. Oh, put me on. There the has been eight duos in NFL history. Mm-hmm. To run for a thousand yards in the same season. Mm-hmm. Who was the last duo? Is it going to be Lamar Jackson and your boy? Was it? Oh, what's the nickname for him? Big Trust. Oh, Big Trust. That. Thank you. Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram. Eight duos in the last in, in the history of the NFL run for a thousand yards. And the Ravens also I mean, have one of my favorite offensive formations, the Heisman. Or, or their offensive package, <laughs> the Heisman with you got Lamar, you got, you got Big Trust right there, and then you got RG3, who was oh so gosh. wasted. Add him to the list. <laughs> and, and we're not even mentioning the fact that they just drafted, I think, one of the most talented running backs in the draft this year, J.K. Dobbins. And we're not even He's... talking about how great Andrews is, is a tight end there, which is why I drafted him in my league. Okay, let's go fancy. Okay. And that defense is still nice. John Harbaugh is still showing, especially with Coach of the Year last year, he's still showing why mm-hmm. he went full in on Lamar Jackson, that offense. He changed his entire and- coaching style and scheme to Lamar Jackson, and oh boy, did it pay off. Maybe not in the playoffs, but at least in the regular season it did. And it's, and especially in a year with, with so much up in the air, mm-hmm. with so much undecided right now, what do you need to be successful this year? Continuity, a coaching staff that knows what they're doing, and expectation of excellence, mm-hmm. which is what John Harba epitomizes. That's what and you got he there. Is going, yeah. Yep. And and we're not even talking about a guy that I think has Tyreek Hill esque upside right. in Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown was Hollywood the Brown first two games, so the first one, two good. games last year. He's he takes the roof off of defenses. He is. 
oh, he's he's fast. If he's Lamar fast. Jackson learns how to throw a deep ball, they will not be stopped. <laughs> it's over. It, but at least the quarterback that can throw a deep ball, he could throw a ball over the mounds over there. If oh that is gosh. your reigning league MVP. Oh, Patrick, $500 million, 10 years. Lamar. I think, it's, I think he's still <laughs> undervalued. I think, oh, sorry, Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. I think he's still undervalued. I mean, still... if you you could you could have sold him the the Kansas City Chiefs organization and you wouldn't be paying him enough. What is he a is, salary cap? The salary cap doesn't exist. <laughs> there needs to be a clause in the new CBA to include for paying Patrick Mahomes whatever he wants. And did you see the, the ring he just got? His new new fiance oh, that rock my. is bigger than mount everest my that man. rock is as big as the rock it, yeah oh, oh and then not even, i'm not gonna lie their super bowl rings they're pretty nice i have to admit they're pretty yeah, nice they're, they're, they're well clean. i mean they're well it done. pains me it pains me to look at that memory and, and and think that how close the niners were to to basking in that glory but it was just a matter of time before you know, uh, uh, at least they had the homes. close game at least it wasn't like super bowl 48 <laughs> Yeah, mm. you're right. I mean, you're right. I, I would, I would much rather be in a game rather than getting at least say, "Oh, we were a play away from winning Super Bowl," and not be like the Broncos say, "We lost we're the Super Bowl away. on the first play." <laughs> yeah, we are a play away in the the first five minutes of the first quarter. Hey, don't give them but, the first five minutes. Get in the first five seconds. Sweet, damn. you're right. You're, you're like, right. I'm trying. To, I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to give you guys a little bit more credit. No, but. hell no. I, I, I'm over it. So I like to roast them, but the Chiefs. They still have one of the best offenses in the league. I really like their new yep. running back, Andy Clyde Edwards Hilaire. That's why I have him yep. in my fantasy football league in one in one of them. The offense is still great. Offensive line, still pretty good. That defense is something that still is a weak suit, but it is still a solid defense overall. And also, the biggest key to that team, I really think, maybe besides Patrick Mahomes, is Andy Reid. Because he is one of the greatest coaches at least offensively in the league right now, maybe ever that Super Bowl ring made him a Hall of Fame coach. Well, I think he was a Hall of Fame coach before then, but it secured his spot in Canton, Ohio, and I don't know how they can't make things happen this year because uh, pretty much the same team, pretty much the same coaching staff, and I think they they have a chance to be better. I mean, doesn't it make you just feel a little warm and fuzzy knowing that? Andy Reid for the next six years just signed a contract extension is going to be in that big old red windbreaker sometimes in the snow with that beard that or that mustache that gets frosted over a little bit rosy cheeks (laughs) not knowing how to clock manage but he's going to be there for the next six years well see the best thing about the ring they're going to win two more Super Bowls at least they they very well could be a dynasty which is what I'm worried about um but I loved was it they got the rings on was it Monday or Tuesday Patrick Mahomes luck, got the his West. ring. Patrick Mahomes, uh, now fiance, got her ring. And then Aunt, uh, Andy Reid went to the buffet and got his onion rings. Sweet damn, he's living the life. Imagine being Andy Reid, bro. Kings, baby. Kings stay kings. Kings stay kings. I, uh, it's, as a Broncos fan, and as the Broncos being in the same division, rivals, big time rivals historically with the Chiefs. I it it still hurts to to say this, but it's you can't not respect the kind of team they they have there in Kansas City. It's yeah. you can't. It's you it's can't. it's greatness. Greatness needs to be recognized. Exactly, but they were, are great. Power rankings going to the league. Um, for Alex, it's the Saints, Niners, Cowboys, Ravens, Chiefs. For me, it is the Seahawks, Saints, Niners, Ravens, Chiefs. And now. Let's go into our next discussion point. This is going to be about the underrated teams and underrated players going to the year. So we're going to start things off with our playoff dark horses. Alex, your dark horse from the AFC is who? This is a team that over the years has been so good at taking my heart out of my chest and ripping it apart because on paper – they are so good. Their offense is stacked. Their defense on paper at every single level has an all-pro level talent, mm-hmm. but they can never put it together. Mm-hmm. And that team is the Atlanta Falcons. Sorry, NFC. And it's then. a team. <laughs> NFC, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I, 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 got a, I got excited here. I, I love <laughs> talking about Matt Ryan, Julio Jones. Matt Ryan offense. is underrated. 
It's because he is. he's it, his team fails him is why. He's he should have a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> Matt Ryan is Matt Ryan is not sexy. He is not the sexy pick, but what he does every year, every game is he's going to throw for 320 yards, he's going to throw for two or three touchdowns. He's probably going to give you a pick, but you know, it's cuz he's trying to push the ball down the field. But what they have this year that they haven't had last year is on paper as of now, they have a healthy Keanu Neal, a healthy Deion Jones, and a healthy Grady Jarrett, who at every level of that defense provides you with speed, provides you with playmaking ability, and provides you with a ceiling of a defense that can keep them in the game for their high-powered offense now with one of the most efficient runners in the red zone, which is where the Falcons have a ton of issues is in the red zone because mm-hmm. they just keep trying to force the ball to Julio Jones. But Todd Gurley doesn't have any knees anymore. He's got an arthritic knee. He's not going to be the guy between the 20s to give you those carries. But what he does is he has a nose for the end zone. And when they get into the red zone, they're going to feed Todd Gurley and he's going to be able to get the job done. Matt Ryan is going to be able to keep that ship afloat. I think they have an ability to go 10 and six. And with this new 17 playoff, they could sneak into the playoffs. I love that. Um, my kind of thing is you may have heard me talk about the two teams I'm going to list, um, respectively AFC, NFC, but it's for, for a good reason. I've been talking about these teams for a little bit now, and the team, my NFC dark horse, is a team that was like, what, 5-11, and 4-12, something bad last year. I believe they had a tie the first the first week of the season, so I think they were 5-10-1. and one, five, Oh, I mistaken. forgot about that stupid tie. The Lions. Oh, the that, Lions. Mm, I hate ties so much. But, um, Quintessential <laughs> Lions-Cardinals tie. It, death, taxes, and the Cardinals and Lions tie. But <laughs> they can go from the worst in the division – and they can go from to, from that to being a playoff team this year. They can, you can sink in to the playoffs 8-8, eight 9-7. Eight, and I think that's what the Cardinals had the ability of doing. Kyler Murray had a offensive rookie of the year performance, and he was a solid quarterback last year with no offensive line in front of him. And now you, this trade is still stupid. And I love it because it's still one of our highest watched videos on, on YouTube saying fire Bill O'Brien because Bill O'Brien – gifted the Arizona Cardinals arguably the greatest receiver in the league right now in in, in I mean, Andre Hopkins. Even my three-year-old cousin who doesn't know what a football is knows that that was a bad trade. I mean, come on, Bill O'Brien. What are you thinking, hey, dude? All I know is he, Bill O'Brien is the Arizona Cardinals' favorite coach in the league right now, if it's not the Agreed. But Agreed. <laughs> Larry they should Fitzgerald. hire him on as a consultant while he's still the coach and the GM for the exactly. Texans. Kenyon Drake was a great move by the Cardinals because he stepped into that role, filled in for the super um, disappointing because I had him for the year. He broke his wrist in the first game and screwed me, um, David Johnson. And so Kenyon Drake killed it. He has a great future ahead of him on this team, and he could be really good point on that offense. Larry Fitzgerald. Might I predicted that Sorry Fitzgerald is going to have his best season over the last five years because of what DeAndre Hopkins is going to do opening up the wow. field. That's wow. that's my, that's what my hot take is going to league. I think Larry Fitzgerald. My hot take it's it's a little spicy, but it's desert. It's Arizona. You got to be hot when talking about the Cardinals. Larry Fitzgerald, eight to ten touchdowns this year. I don't hate it, and and here's what I love about this team now is previously. They've, they've had two good receivers. Christian Kirk's a good receiver. Larry Fitzgerald's a good receiver. But what adding DeAndre Hopkins does is it moves Kirk back into his natural position mm-hmm. in the slot. And what did Kyler Murray do extremely well in Oklahoma? He threw to the slot. To Who the played slot. the slot? C.D. Lamb played the slot in Oklahoma. And I think that three-headed monster at receiver – is going to be extremely effective. And when you throw in... It's a great core. They got a great core there. It's just a really good offense with a with a good offensive-minded coach. They're mm-hmm. going to put up points. And now you finally have an offensive line in front of Kyler Murray a little bit with the great pick of Josh Jones from Houston, um, eighth overall steal pick. Of the, I steal, love that steal pick. Of the draft. I love that pick so much. And then criminally underrated Chandler Jones is still is your edge rusher. He's phenomenal. Now you're paying Buda Baker in the highest paid safety of all time. 
I think Love he could that produce. episode, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you, Alex. Also, also so, the, so the listeners don't get upset. Josh Jones <laughs> was not the eighth overall pick. He was Sorry. a... It was a the third third rounder pick, but Sorry, he should have been eight in the third. Should round. have been in the first round. Josh Jones was a first round talent that slipped to the third round because GMs don't know what they're doing. Thank you for correcting me. Eighth pick in the third round, um, seventy two overall. Yes, that's why. That's why pick, I pay you the bid. The eighth box. overall pick on their team, Isaiah, and then I don't know, my, yeah. his name might pop up again. But Chase mm-hmm. Edmonds it could still be good. I like. Kelvin Beecham um, on the offensive line as well. Yes. Dre Kirkpatrick yes. could surprise people in, in the defensive secondary unit. And so I like where they're taking this team. I could very well see them 9 7, 7 seed in the NFC. Now, I agree. I, I could see them having a Rams esque year from last year, get 9 and 7, sneaking into the playoffs. I, I, I don't know if they're going to do much with that playoffs, but I could see them making it. Now, the AFC, on the other hand, like I was alluded to, I said the teams I've always compared to each other is that the Cardinals are the NFC version of this team. The AFC version is the the um the like the Cardinals of the AFC, what have you. That's the yep. Denver Broncos because they're building the offensive line. They have a young quarterback that has a promising career in front of him as of right now. They built around him in the draft. The, they also have a great receiving core with a solid defense behind them and an improved running game. They are so similar teams. The Broncos can very well go 9-7 and seven and make the playoffs as a 6 or 7 seed. I love... I'm not even trying to sound homer here. Um, Drew Locke, there's a lot of pressure on him, especially given how much they built around him in the draft. They're going all in on Drew Locke. But he... He could be their. Uh, they've we've been saying this for the last five years, but he might be their answer to um, the the next franchise quarterback. Cortland Sutton is stepping up to be a major wide receiver one, and then I love the pick. Um, Philip Lindsay could still be really good at the backfield. They're improving the offensive line. It's going to be there for the second year now, so that obviously still helps. Bradley Chubb. He could very well be in the uh, be in the the category for comeback player of the year, coming back Great. from torn ACL. He could be that guy. Now you have a bunch of guys coming back from injury, stepping up. Um, sorry, um, AJ Boye now joining mm-hmm. the Broncos is improving. That Underrated backfield. signing. Yes, that was. I really enjoyed seeing that, and then also one of the, I think one of the. He very well could be rookie of the year. It'd be hard as a wide receiver, but Jerry Judy is making waves in the Broncos training camp. And from all the experts, he's been teaching Cortland Sutton and the vets how to do how to run their routes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop you right there, Ross. Stop me right there. You you made an incredible point. Jerry Judy in college was one of the purest route runners that I have ever seen come out of college. His ability to stop, start, cut, be able to leverage his body to, to restack on a fade route or set his receipt or set his cornerback up, give him a little out fake to do an inside slant. His ability to cut on a dime, to set DBs up, to create space is unprecedented in coming out of the draft. He doesn't have the catch, run after catch ability that CD Lamb does or the, the breakaway speed that Henry Ruggs does. Mm-hmm. But as a number one or number two outside receiver, you could not draw up a better prospect than Jerry Judy and, and someone who I think so is going underrated <laughs> this year. So and, and I think he's, I think he's being overshadowed by Jerry Judy, is it... but one of the best players on one of the best teams in college last year, Say it. KJ Hamler, the, you mean the is man is a play maker. You mean the rent men. Uh, he had a running start, but in the game, he ran 40 yards in less than four seconds. They clocked him at that. That dude is He is a playmaker. Do you want to take a top off the defense? You send KJ Hamler from the slot on inside fade, and if you have a cover two or a cover three or a cover one or a cover zero or any sort of coverage, try to stop KJ Hamler. See, you're a quarterback. You're not going to do it. How easy would it be to throw it to this guy? How easy would it be? If 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 I lined up in 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 high school, I was blessed with two outside receivers that both went D one. But if I lined up under center yeah, and right. I looked to my left, I, I know, I know, trust me. 
I wasn't very good, but I was able to throw the ball to these these massive people that ran four fives and, and went to D1. But if I looked to my left and I see, okay, cool, I got Cortland Sutton out there. Okay, he's got a he's got a pretty good matchup. He's matched up against the number one corner. But oh, whoops, I look to the right and I see Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler. KJ. And then all of a sudden, oh shoot, I forgot because he looks like an offensive lineman because he's got his hand in the dirt. But Noah oh, Fant that? is an incredible tight end. His last his last five games of the season last year, once when there's noticeable. I might notice some more bears. I was definitely watching on their games. But that offense as soon as Joe Flacco was out, as soon as Brandon Allen was out in and Drew Locke stepped in. What a mistake to have Joe Flacco on the team. Just, just to, I don't up, want to, to rehash. I, I don't want to talk. I don't want to rehash bad memories. But Joe, Joe Flacco, Flacco was is maybe elite. one of the worst quarterbacks to ever win the Super Bowl. Joe Flacco is elite, but he is not good. Uh, <laughs> no offense. That's a yes, correct. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really good. That whole offense started to click more, especially their game against the Houston Texans in Houston was embarrassing for Houston, and that just made me so happy. But then. A guy under the most, one of the most underrated players, Justin Simmons. He does not get the respect he deserves as a safety. And then, I think my favorite trade that the Broncos made, at least for value, they gave a seventh rounder to the Tennessee Titans. In return, they got the Titans' best defensive lineman in Jarrell Casey, and the Broncos get underrated. to play at home against Tennessee. A little revenge game, maybe. Maybe. I mean, you can Drill you can chalk that up man. as a W right now. Let's. Do you want to take a trip out to Vegas to, to max bet that team right now? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing: is the only thing that could potentially hold back the Broncos this year is Drew Locke's small hands. That's it. <laughs> it's the only thing you got. Hey, but and, when and I got my quarterback that's dancing on the sideline, rapping to the, to the music, that the swagger. Uh, that might be underrated, but the presence of that and to see that kind of confidence in a young quarterback can work wonders. Yep. And just to revisit part of our intro when we're talking about, um, you know, having no fans in the stadiums and, and the home field advantage being somewhat diminished mm -hmm. is teams like the Broncos that play at elevation and they have a caked in advantage because of that, because they're used to it. Mm -hmm. They still have a home field advantage. Right. They still do. Oh, you, know, you can't. The, you, there you may can be the crowd one noise. team that could have it. You can lower crowd noise. You can't lower elevation. Uh. Oh, I mean, it's Mile High Stadium for a reason. I don't know if you've been to to Colorado recently, but walking up and down the it's streets hard. there. I mean, I I get wind. I think I'm in okay I, shape. I, was, I, I was, get winded yeah. walking up down the street. I was able. To, I was lucky enough to be able to make it to Denver for one game, and yeah. that was when the first year of Peyton Manning. And I was walking up the stairs in the in, to get to my seats, and um, you just ran that was tough. Time. That was tough. Agreed. <laughs> and now, I'm I'm really excited as a fan um, for the Broncos, but I think that's something there. And I'd like your pick as the AFC um, dark horse. You know, I think I'm cheating here from a dark horse standpoint, but but this team didn't make the playoffs last year. Mm -hmm. They didn't have their starting quarterback. They made a trade. Wait, were you saying something wrong about the duck? I mean, I love the duck more or than the next. The guy. red nosed reindeer. But. The Pittsburgh Steelers have a chance to be a really, really, really good team in the AFC. They have a chance to rival the Ravens and the AFC North. Their defense remains unchanged. You get another year of TJ Watt developing pass rush moves. You get another year of implementing Minka Fitzpatrick. TJ Watt added. TJ Watt could he could be a problem. He could be. He, he those already Watts, is a problem. Those he Watts already are, is a problem. He was Hot underrated take. last year. Hot, hot take. Hot take. TJ Watt is already better than his brother. Already. It's and I don't think it's 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 in the realm of possibility that he has a significantly better career than JJ. And, and also, I mean, just just from bringing bringing your family into the fold, they signed Derek Watt. They they brought in his brother. I mean, how cool is that? To now you just seen JJ the, have the holy trinity. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they just need. I mean. Bill O'Brien might trade JJ for a, a, a pack of peanuts at this point. I you mean, know, I did have one of my favorite things I've ever heard in practice was we had uh, the offense lineman in college messing up, and our offensive line coach yelled at him, I trade you for a bag of chili cheese Fritos. And Bill O'Brien heard that and said, not a bad idea. And he said, I'll even throw in a second rounder. <laughs> I mean, Bill, don't get me started on Bill O'Brien. You want, you want extra large fries? Uh, you want a second rounder with that? 
Yeah, I mean, Bill O'Brien will do anything. But uh, God I mean, bless the, you, Bill the Steelers, the Steelers have a chance, and, and underrated as well. Mm-hmm. We've never seen Big Ben under two hundred and ninety pounds before. He might come into this year <laughs> with actually being skinny. The possibilities are limitless with this team, and I don't want to spend too much more time on the Steelers because you know there's their fans are already annoying enough, but. They have an incredible team. I think Juju Smith Schuster gets back to his normal Juju. self. I think I, I think it was a fluke last year. I think James Washington's a great a great player. Mm. I think Deontay Johnson is an underrated slot guy, and you know they they have the tools in place to be a really good playoff team. And Mike Tomlin is still one of the best coaches in the league. He improved Mike that Tomlin last year. Wins. Mike Prove Tomlin wins year after year after year. And we go. You know who's never had a losing record before? Mike Tomlin. Is it Mike Tomlin? Not Bill Belichick. Not the greatest coach Not- of all time. It's Mike Tomlin. It's the Mike man Tomlin. that is so dedicated to winning that he'll treat people from the sideline. <laughs> Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin. <laughs> wins. And now we go from the most underrated team, maybe, to the most underrated player, Alex. The Bills are going to be a problem this year for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They can finally step they out are. of the Patriots shadow in the AFC East. And Josh Allen could finally make some moves. That defense is finally clicking. And so, your most underrated player in the league is? The Bills secondary is hands down the best secondary in the NFL. And it's not close. Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde are a very, very good safety tandem. But what makes that secondary tick, let me just throw out some stats on you. I'm not even going to say the name. Stat, yet. Let me just throw out some stats. Six interceptions last year. When targeted, zero touchdowns surrendered. When targeted, a passer rating, not a, not a QBR, not in a hundred scale. Uh, this is the full pass, the full passer rating scale, 46.3 when targeted. Tredavious White is a bona fide lockdown corner. He is going to also benefit from an extremely aggressive pass rush. Extremely aggressive. Trent Murphy, Ed Oliver are going to get after the quarterback this year. The teams they're playing against are not going to have the time to throw. And when you have a lockdown corner that can that can lock down your number one receiver for three to four seconds every single pass play, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to force turnovers, and Tredavious White is going to have more turnovers. Don't be surprised. Do not be shocked if Tredavious White is in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year this year. Do not he's be got shocked. The, he's got the makeup of Stephon Gilmore last well, year. Yeah, he could have was, a very similar season and be the DPOI. I took the words out of my mouth, Alex. Like we're on the same way. One show, and we're already clicking like this. It I mean, the 50th amazing. show. The 50th show is it's just got it's, magic. It's the magic. It's like... It. The Broncos won the 50th Super Bowl, and we're killing it on the 50th show. It's just how things I happen. I agree. This is just how it goes sometimes. We, we're saying defense with this because former Bronco, he got the ring with the Broncos, began Super Bowl 50. Then he was he was only a backup, though, and he wasn't backup caliber. He, was, he could start mm-hmm. on any other team in the league if it wasn't for the Broncos. So that's what he did. I was sad when he left. But also, I respected the hell out of it because I knew he had greener pastures and he deserved to be a starter on the team. And that is Shaq Bear. He took his talents to South Beach, went to Tampa, and man... Hate to see him go, but love to watch him leave, baby. I, I, I was appreciate that he at least left the AFC. So the Broncos exactly. hardly had to worry about him. He'd go wreck shop, down, live on the beach, live in the good life, so good for him. Shaq Barrett was a franchise tag this year. He was a pro bowler last year, um, like he was mm-hmm. with Denver. He had another pro bowl year. L- led the league in sacks with 19 and a half. 19 and a half. If I do my math correctly, that's a half away from 20. That's a pretty good year. Let me let me bust out the calculator. Yeah, hold on. Carry the, carry the point five. Yeah. You're dead on the money, Alex. You are dead on the money. Also, wow. add this to your numbers. Whew. Six forced fumbles in a interception as a pass rusher, which is not easy to do. I have to bring do. in my second hand for those fumbles. <laughs> Man. What a player. He's good. What a player. He deserves better than a franchise sack, but you shout out to him because he's still making great guaranteed money with the tag, so he's getting paid. He deserves a better contract. I think he will finally get it next year, especially who knows what the Bucks are going to do, especially with Leonard Fournette now. Uh, mm-hmm. they, I don't like what they're doing in Tampa because it has me worried. Immediately. 
But Shaq yeah. Barrett, he's on. Th- why team. won't he have another great season this year? Why won't he? Why won't he do better this year? Because he will actually have a dependable offense in front of him. All signs point to him just continuing to dominate. All signs point to him making being a, a all pro, being AP first team all pro this year, and not just. I mean, Pro Bowls are cool. Don't get me wrong, but uh, mm-hmm. Pro Bowl is just a Pro Bowl. He'll be an all-pro player this year as a defensive end, as a pass rusher. Or maybe they'll put him as outside linebackers. Who knows? He could do both. He does everything. And he is finally starting to get the recognition he deserves, luckily. But it's still not enough. It's not enough. And he'll show people why. And Shaq Shaq Barrett is an incredible talent. He's in a perfect system to allow him to rush the passer every single play. He's got the situation, the talent, and the drive because he's on that franchise tag. I mean, what's the better motivator than money? Money motivator. That's that's what it is. When you franchise tag a guy that has 19 and a half sacks, the only logical option for him is to have 20 next year. That's it. He's going to get paid. What's a better way to get paid and to do better than your career year last year? Get that money. Dollar. Get that money. Dollar bills. Y'all. 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 And now, that's it. We were talking about the guy. We're, they're going to win awards this year. Very possibly, at least be in the conversation. But our picks for awards starts now. And it starts with Offensive Player of the Year in Alex. Uh, it may be obvious, but also it's hard to not bet on this man, right? I mean,. I'm going to have two different picks for offensive player of the year and MVP. And mm-hmm. and I think that's just because you cannot ignore the talent of Patrick Mahomes. I mean, you thought that the only thing that could stop him was potentially an injury. He has a dislocated kneecap last year, misses a game, maybe <laughs> a game and a half because he, he came out of, of the, of the first game. Or but I know those core zone shots to got, feel like something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, Tordal was a heck of a drug, but <laughs> he has the weapons around him. He's got the coach around him that believes in him. He's got a bad defense, so he's going to be in shootouts. And he's just got everything you need for a repeat season. I think I think he's going to pressure 50 touchdowns again. I think Kelsey has, you know, only a couple years left. He's Our getting odds. up there. What are the odds that he at least matches Peyton Manning's 55 touchdowns in a season? You know, that season, and I'll, I'll say from experience, I had Peyton Manning that year in fantasy football. I hate you. I am the year after. It, it was so rewarding, but that's a hard, that's a very hard bar to get to. 55 I, is a lot. It's but a I lot. think he's, I, I think he's going to get 50. And I think the reason for that is he's getting rid of a guy who was a great goal line back in Damian Williams. Mm-hmm. And he's in, and he's substituting him with a, primary pass catcher in Clyde Edwards Hilaire. When Patrick Mahomes went into the draft and and saw all the talent available, Andy Reid went up to him and said, who do you want to add to this offense to supplement this already number one, number two offense? And he said, that guy from LSU who caught every single pass, could break tackles, could make the big plays, had incredible hands. Give me Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Hey, shout out to him and what did they do? What did they my do? PPR leagues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he's he's – he has the he has the ceiling to have a CMC type receiving year, not rushing year, but receiving year. Exactly. And that offense is just going to keep getting better. Mahomes is going to be continuing to see more and more types of op, more and more types of defenses, being able to read the whole field. He's going to get better every single year, and he is the odds-on favorite to be the offensive player of the year. I love it. My, I'm just going to squeeze this thing in real quick while we mentioned Travis Kelsey mm-hmm. in fantasy football. I just want to tell you, the scummiest thing I've ever seen in fantasy football up to this date is he had the first um, overall pick. So we're doing sync draft, so he'll have back-to-back picks. And mm-hmm. he somehow got lucky enough to be in this position. Shout out to fan of the show. I know you'll be listening. Ryan Watson, you piece of crap. Back-to-back, he drafted George Kittle and then Travis Kelsey. <laughs> What a hoarder. <laughs> Scumbag, right? What a hoarder. Scumbag. You'll need Ryan, those two. If Ryan, if you're listening, which I know you are. You are. 
you just can't do that, man. I mean, you're just, you're screwing over your friends, your family members, anyone in that league. It's just, it's, it's greedy. Of you. Hey, hey it really we is. know our league, the dirty dozen, we don't mess around. Ryan, watch your back this year, buddy. Okay. Yeah. I might We're not be in El Grove, this year. but I know people that are in El Grove. Okay. Watching you. Blood. <laughs> I just want to get that off my chest because I still hate him for that. And now I'm thinking another guy, you already mentioned him. When you're talking about Clyde edwards Hilaire, I love Christian McCaffrey to be the Offensive Player of the Year. He very well could have been and maybe should have been last year. 19 total touchdowns, nearly 2,400 total yards. That's ridiculous. He put it's the insane. Offense... I, it's it's hard to imagine for a bad team. A bad they were they even go 500. They even go 500. He. Put that team in offense on his back. And now he has an even better offense with him now. He has a better, if we're talking about performance from last year, may not be with this year, but Teddy Bridgewater is going to be a better quarterback than what Cam Newton was last year. And especially because they're not going to have Allen uh, in, in the game too. So, I mean, l- let me let me pause you right here. Pause. Their quarterback from last year might be, the third string quarterback for one of the worst teams in the NFL this year, the Washington football team and TM Washington football team. First time I've been able to say that on a podcast. <laughs> so rewarding, but Kyle Allen is the third stringer in Washington. And he was their starter for over half the year last Come year. On. And he still had 2,400 yards. Bridgewater won five games for the saints and they five and Oh, I love Tate Bridgewater. I'm so happy he's mm-hmm. getting his chance. I loved him. It, 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 I was big on Minnesota. Super unfortunate what happened to him. I'm so glad he's finally getting his chance as a starting quarterback. Too bad he's starting over my boy from the XFL, MVP J Walker. And then now they even get Cam Phillips on the team. My best receiver in the XFL from 2020. Shout out to my mm-hmm. uh, Houston Roughnecks boys. And here's my cheap plug, Alex. Recently, if we're talking about the Houston Roughnecks, I did have a great interview with cornerback coach and assistant coach of the Houston Roughnecks a couple weeks ago. So go check that out. Darius Bell, great man, great talk, a lot of the fun stuff. Great interview, Bell. great interview. Thank you, Alex. There's yeah. my plug. I'm really good at them. Um, but Christian yeah. McCaffrey, he might be even able to take over more of a bigger role on that offense. So... He's getting 20 touchdowns. He's getting 2,500 total yards this year, and he's also being able to bring home the title of Offensive Player of the Year. Those and are I my think you're, and I, I think you're neglecting one of the biggest additions to the Carolina offense this year, and it's in Joe Brady. Joe Brady, Joe Brady, Joe Brady. ran the most efficient and nasty <laughs> offense in college football over the last – 50 years mm-hmm. in that LSU offense mm-hmm. last year. And you're going to bring him into the NFL with the quarterback that can't throw over 20 yards and is going to be dinking and dunking all day long. I think Christian McCaffrey might have 150 catches this year. I mean, don't, get, <laughs> don't quote me on that one, but it's possible. It's, <laughs> it's possible. possible. But you heard possible, your Alex, but he has said Christian McCaffrey 200 catches on the season. <laughs> I mean, don't at me. <laughs> don't at me. At Cole Takes Exposed. Um, <laughs> now jumping to the other side of the football Defensive player of the year. He very well could have been defensive player of the year if he he started off hot. He he did finish as well, but that's not saying much. Do not want to take away from the season base. He was still a defensive rookie of the year. Nick Bosa has all the makings in that fantastic 49ers front seven to become defensive player of the year to recognize his potential. Last year, nine sacks, one force fumble, 47 tackles. 16 of those were tackles for loss. 16 that is huge nick bosa has and he's surrounded by talent he has a defensive back he has a defensive secondary that may not be the best but they can make the quarterback all it doesn't take a quarterback to hold the ball for six seconds all he needs is that one pump fake that one oh i'm gonna throw it no hold it sack that is what gets you and that is what nick bosa can do and especially because offensive lines are going to contain that whole thing your front five is going to be able to to block those four mm-hmm. nick bosa is going to have plenty of opportunities this year and there's no reason why he cannot become defensive player of the year i i agree 100 percent, and, and something that is evident in the last five years of ohio state football is they know how to develop pass rushing defensive ends 
And Nick Bosa, I think, is the most talented, the most technical, and has the highest ceiling of the three big boys out of Ohio State in the last three years, Chase Young, Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa. And he has a whole offseason to develop under Robert Salah, who is just going to be able to scheme up one-on-one matchups. He's got Javon Kinlaw, who demands a double team every Mm -hmm. single time he steps on the field. And he's got D Ford, who hopefully stays healthy this year. And you have Eric Armstead. I mean, that is a four-man defensive line Mm -hmm. that rivals any other front four in the NFL. And now he may just be the GM, a great GM at that. Love the move with John Lynch. He may not be a coach, but who's saying that uh, as great of a defensive player that John Lynch was, he might be dropping a hint here or there, you know, maybe to the coaching staff or whatever. And John Lynch has probably he's probably had some talks with uh, with their future uh, of the defense and Nick Bosa. So who knows? He might get a little extra knowledge from that guy as well. I think so too. I mean, it's not not a bad guy to have in your corner than uh, than John Lynch, one of the most hardest hitting safeties in the league. So much fun watching watching him that two safety look. Oh my, he oh, yeah. was. He was small. He was compact. I won't get you started with that one. We might not have to. We might have to end the podcast early. <laughs> I feel that, man. And now I really liked where you went with this. We talked him. Yeah. We talked about him earlier. Uh, I think people people are respecting him enough. Maybe not mm-hmm. everyone is is respective enough, but he very well can make waves in the NFL this year, especially in the AFC. Who you got? I said it before. The best Watt brother right now is TJ Watt. He had 18 sacks last year. He had eight forced fumbles, which was tied for first in the NFL. A great secondary behind him. A a very, you know, one of those secondaries. One of those secondaries that just locks onto receivers and makes those quarterback hold the ball a little bit longer. And and one thing that I think is going to yield to a 20-sack season this year is – Big Ben is going to put up points. He's going to chuck the rock. It doesn't matter if his arm falls off. He's going to be in shootouts. So what does that mean if the Steelers are scoring points? What does the other team have to do then? They have to throw the ball to keep up. And what does throwing the ball mean? It means 30 to 40 pass attempts for the opponents. And what does 30 to 40 pass attempts mean for TJ Watt? 30 to 40 attempts to get a sack. And I think I'll take those chances that 2% of the time (laughs) – TJ Watt can get a sack. And I think that that number keeps going up. He's going to have he's going to have games where he has two sacks, three sacks, three and a half sacks, a forced fumble. This guy is talented. He's got the situation. He's got Cam Hayward on the other side. He's got an incredible secondary. He's got an aggressive-minded defensive coach in Mike Tomlin. He's got the setup. He's got the offense. He's in the division that's going to be able – I mean – how fun would it be to sack Baker Mayfield? That's the one guy I'd love to sack every single time of the year. Oh. But TJ Watt, I think, is going to have now he a could very... sack the, uh, the highest tally rookie that we've seen in the wild too. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think uh, I think as a fellow a fellow pretty boy, TJ Watt sees Joe Burrow on this pedestal right now, and he would love nothing more than to knock him down a couple pegs. And you play oh, him yeah. two times a year, oh, yeah. he's going to sack him, I think, three and or four Steelers times And the Steelers-Bengals is not – it's it's definitely rivalry. Definitely rivalry yeah. they got there. It's, it's the, I mean, that's, that's whole, one of those – If we really want to talk about the whole AFC North, there's no, like, division rival or whatever. They all hate each other so much. I yeah. love – there's really good smash mouth, hard-nosed, hatred filled mm-hmm. football in the AFC North. It's so much yeah, fun. Yeah. I agree. And I think you I think he's also going to get he's going to he's going to be able to steal one time this year. Lamar Jackson scrambling around gets tackled <laughs> 1 yard behind the line of scrimmage for a TJ Watt sack that doesn't really yield much negative results, negative yardage, but he's going to steal a couple a uh, couple sacks from from playing the Ravens that year. So that's my pick for a defensive player of the year and I'm sticking to it. You may call it a hot take. But I really believe that if T.J. Watt is able to stay healthy, he will be the best. He he'll be better than J.J. Watt. He'll be better than J.J. Watt. He already is. Oh, oh. I think he already is better than him. Oh, I, it's nothing I against J.J. Watt. Nothing against J.J. Watt because they play a different position. I'll give you yeah. that. They play a different position. J.J. Watt's more inside, yeah. and they don't call him J.J. Swat for nothing. He, exactly. he bats down balls with the best of them. But, but T.J. is able to stay healthy. I that's one of my least favorite things over the NFLs. If Man, imagine if we've seen the full J- healthy JJ Watt through his career. I know oh, it's man. ridiculous. I mean, he was he he had he was Aaron Donald before Aaron Donald was born. Yes. 
Hundred percent. And that dude's still a freak in the weight room with all these injuries. Ag- ag- agreed. And also, so yeah, that's my pick for defensive player of the year. One of my favorite pictures of all time that I've ever seen in the NFL was JJ Watt with that super mangled, bloody nose. Mm. And that dude just looking mean and not giving a single F. He he he, he looks like a guy you'd want in the foxhole. If I saw JJ Watt in the dark alley, mm-hmm. either I'd run, but if I could have run, I would um I'd write my will and just drop it on my dead body because you're not escaping there. <laughs> I would just ask him to just pay for my funeral at least. That's all that I would ask. Hey, given how charitable he is, I think he might. I think he would. I think <laughs> I mean, he would. I think he'd throw me a heck of a party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just open casket, man. Just leave the face. Leave the face, please. Yeah. Yeah. Or or give me the or give me the bloody face that you had in that oh. picture. What a tribute. That's <laughs> He'll do that with a headbutt too, guarantee. Exactly. I guarantee, JJ Watt is a headbutter, guarantee oh. that. <laughs> I mean, could you draw a headbutter up in the lab any any different? Maybe given the forehead to Peyton Manning, that's about it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> God, who's that guy from West Virginia? That fullback. Um, oh, Owen something. Uh, he uh, he he Just headbutted me. himself before a Seahawks before a Seahawks game. Just yeah. classic. It made yeah. himself bleed and just got a little oh, switch yeah. up on the sideline. Look, Beautiful. Yeah. I love that guy. A lot of people they call guy. me head. No, God bless you, man. And now let's jump on over to our rookies. Offensive rookie of the year. We mentioned him, AFC North. I, it might sound lame, but I really believe Joe, Joe Burrow can translate his college style gameplay to fit the NFL and it might be the most seamless out of the his quarterback rookie class. And he's surrounded by a fairly good offense right there. A.J. Green, big veteran. If he stays healthy, he's a factor. Joe Mixon, if. they just inked him to a big-time contract. They are all in on him. If you have a good running game, that takes a lot of pressure off a quarterback, especially a rookie quarterback. And a guy that they marry, he might have the best year of his career so far, Tyler Boyd is poised, I really believe, for a breakout season, and he might be Joe Burrow's best target. Agreed. And, and I think uh, also Owen Schmidt was the uh, the player on, on Seattle who, who banged his face in the head. <laughs> very got, got very hyped. That was going to bother me the rest of the podcast. But, um, you know, something that I think is underrated when you're talking about an offensive rookie of the year is does he have the opportunity to put up stats? And what the Cincinnati Bengals don't have – it's a good defense. They're gonna give up some points this They're year. They're gonna have to pass he's the gonna ball. Be, he's gonna be playing from behind a lot. And I think if Joe Burrow stays healthy, his over under right now in Vegas for passing touchdowns is twenty one and a half. I mean, I think I think that over is pretty secure by week three. I bang mean, the over. Bang the over. Bang not, the over hard. I'm not a bay man, but I'm and, I'm banging the hell out of that over. I agree. And I think something underrated about Joe Burrow's game is he's he's frisky in the run game. He is going to put his head down. Mm-hmm. He's he's going to steal you 30 to 40 yards a game. I think he could rush for three to four touchdowns. And if he throws for 27, 20, 28 touchdowns, rushes for three to four and has a 30 mm-hmm. touchdown year, that's a pretty good number for think, offensive rookie of the year. I think why I like him so much is because why I think he'll do well in the NFL is it's his pocket presence and his demeanor mm-hmm. when under pressure. I mean, he wasn't Agreed. under pressure too much because he had a fantastic offensive line in front of him, an award-winning offensive line in front of him. The Broncos drafted mm-hmm. his, uh, their um, center, Lloyd Cushenberry. He's going to be a factor mm-hmm. on that offense line. He's going to start from game one. But at the same yeah. time, he is – he's Joe Cool. He's calm. He has ice in the veins. And he – will read the defense, he'll send the pocket, he'll sense the pressure, he'll step up, he'll evade, he'll move to the side. And like you said, if he sees a lane and no one open, he'll run. He'll take those five, six yards, take a side, live to find another down, but just keep on pushing that ball down the field. And I like yeah. what he does in the pocket. Yeah, and, and, I, and I was too excited about Joe Burrow, but I don't know if you mentioned it, but Lloyd Cushenberry was also a center in college. He has rapport with him. Mm-hmm. And, I and think he's, he's on the Broncos. Oh, you're, yeah, you're right. You My bad. But he, but he, but he has he has that knack, and he's he's got that he's got that feel. He's got that look of he's got the this guy. This guy's never too big for the moment. The, the moment is never going to exceed what he 
see. thinks is going to happen. When I saw just... Joe, Bur- Joe Burrow in the locker room mm-hmm. after dismantling their opponents in the in, in the championship game for the college football playoff, I saw him in still in full gear, didn't take off his shoulder pads, just laid back with the stogie. <sighs> <sighs> I, I, that's the older for me. It's something out of a movie scene, is what it is. Especially when you put that video in slow motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that he Joe, has it. Joe Cool, Joe Cool <laughs> is is the nickname that is going to stick with him for the rest of his life, and it couldn't be more fitting. You know, Joe Montana played that very well, but if mm-hmm. there's anyone that might take the take the torch around with the Joe Cool, I think it's Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed, and, and I think that segues very well into into my pick for the offensive rookie of the year, his college teammate, <laughs> Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Hilaire. I don't know if you want to say the H or not, but C E H is in the perfect position to put up numbers in his Chiefs offense. Even before Damian Williams decided to opt out this year, I thought he was going to have a very, 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 very big role in this Chiefs offense. But when Damian Williams decided, I'm going to sit this year out, Clyde Edwards Hilaire just doubled his touch count. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to have a hundred plus targets this year. I think he's going to be able to get 150 to 200 carries this year. He's going to be able to, to be put in positions to be matched up against linebackers. I mean, you have two guys on the outside to take the absolute top off the defense. You have a guy working the middle of the field. It, three guys, Sammy Watkins, also underrated, can take mm-hmm. a top off the defense. Travis Kelsey demands a double team or he's going to get the ball. Yeah. And you have now Clyde Edwards Hilaire sh- shaking and, and, and diving and, and jumping and, and moving everywhere. Clyde's what and, linebacker is going to be able to stay with him? If I'm a linebacker and I see Clyde come out of the backfield for a pass play, I'm just uh, praying. I'm praying because that's yeah. the most he's, you can he, do. He's Darren Sproles with the body of a fire hydrant oh. and he can catch the ball. I mean, Frank Gore and Darren you, Sproles. Yeah. How can you draw up a better res- running back for that offense? It's hard to. It, it's really hard to. I'm not you, crazy. You can't. I, I, would, I mean, I'd love to put another six inches on the guy, but <laughs> may, maybe maybe that maybe that small frame benefits him when he's running behind six, eight, six, seven. Exactly. He's hard, he's hard to see command the backfield base. You don't see him yeah. until he's an alpha and beyond those guys. I love that. But now, and he doesn't have he doesn't have to come in. Last point I'll make on Clyde mm-hmm. is he doesn't have to come in and be the focal point of the offense. No, All he has to do is star in his role. He's if he could be a role player, and that's like not a bad thing. If you are a role player, those are need on mm-hmm. any sport on any team. But if he can just be a role player, he's still going to play a huge role. He is going to be a factor in that Chiefs offense. And if anything, Agreed. he doesn't really need it, but he's easily going to be a safety net for Patrick Mahomes. Agreed. So, Patrick Mahomes has time. has people down the sidelines, down the middle of the field, short routes, and then he even has a guy in the backfield now. Sweet damn, that is something. And now let's flip sides to the defensive side. Another LSU guy for you, Alex. Man, it's like I mean, that team with this Central is, this is, was amazing. For <laughs> it's, I mean, it's crazy that now the the three first picks we have for some sort of offensive or defensive rookie of the year comes from LSU. And I think, I think there's Patrick Queen, <laughs> Patrick Queen couldn't have gotten drafted into a better situation for this Baltimore defense. Patrick I mean, Queen just... making it late in in that when he was drafted, when he dropped that late, I was shocked. Mm-hmm. And when the um, Ravens picked him up, I was like, mm-hmm. "That's gonna be a problem. I mean, That's gonna be a problem." He, here's the here's the thing: is is you just you draft Patrick Queen, mm-hmm. you plug him into the middle linebacker spot, he's gonna get a hundred plus tackles. He's going to run sideline to sideline. He's going to be in a lot of positions to be successful in that defense. And I just, I see him having a very similar season to CJ Mosley. I mean, CJ Mosley was in that defense in the same position, got drafted out of Alabama Mm -hmm. and immediately made an impact. And I think Patrick queen has a very similar frame. I think he's a little faster East to West and he's got a great feel to make tackles. And he's going to be the defensive rookie of the year this year. I really like that. Love, oh man, Baltimore fans everywhere were electric when they were actually they got able blessed. to get. Oh, that's a blessing to be able to get Patrick Queen. That's unfair yeah. to be able to get Patrick Agreed. Queen. Super Agreed. amazing for them. I'm seeing with um, another guy in that first round. This one from Clemson though, so no more LSU. He's from Clemson. Mm-hmm. 
He was the eighth overall pick in the draft, and that was Cardinals, now linebacker, Isaiah Simmons. This dude is a freak athlete. He mm-hmm. is... It's like he could cover the whole middle of the field. And, and, and his coverage is good. His pass rush it's, is good. He's He can do everything as a linebacker. It's what, almost like Clemson was a good team last year, too. Oh, it's almost like Clemson had a great head coach. Great uh, in the playoffs, great in the conference, and just a good team as well. It's and made the thought? national championship. Who would have thought, right? Right? Oh man, it, there's it's too similar. Isaiah Simmons, he comes like the LSU players. He comes from a team that p- p- plays and performs and is coached in like a very NFL esque style. These are teams and Clemson players and LSU players have tons of success in the NFL due to what they go through in college. And Isaiah Simmons is going to be a starter right out of the bat, and he's going to be a playmaker right out of the gates. And he ba- he's going to be able to be that defensive rookie of the year. A linebacker is a great spot to be in in terms of awards. There's a lot they can do. There's a lot of stats you can get. There's a lot of impact you have on the game. That also favors him. But I believe he is the defensive rookie of the year. And I think another great point on Isaiah Simmons is – the Cardinals have a history in taking one of those kind of safety linebacker hybrid types that's extremely fast, can cover the middle of the field, can can run all over the field. And Dayon Buchanan, who they had a couple years ago, mm-hmm. and they just now they, they know that mold. But what I will say is that is Isaiah Simmons, you better strap up. September thirteenth, <laughs> first game of the year. Welcome to the NFL. Go guard George Kittle. Good <laughs> luck, sir. Hey, that would be one hell of an intro, but mm-hmm. you know, if he's able to do something well, then, oh, we're, we're in for something. And all, yeah. uh, and I have to apologize, So I called Isaiah Simmons, I call him an athlete. He's not an athlete. Yeah. He's better than that. He is an athlete. That's what the F. Athlete, Isaiah Simmons. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't second that notion there, but I like where your head's at. Thank you. I appreciate it. Were you more of a... <laughs> What what's a better athlete to you? Is it with the F or is a step above the one with the PH? I mean, I think the PH will come after at least a year in the in the, in the league. He was he was an athlete in college. Let's see if you can add that P in there. <laughs> and now let's switch it to comeback player of the year. I'm going to start off with this because he's a man that is impossible to hate. He's been a man that's mm-hmm. been around the, the league not too much. He's no Ryan Fitzpatrick, but he's experienced on multiple teams. Mm-hmm. He had one of the most gruesome leg injuries you will ever see in your life. He almost died from health complications from a broken, extremely broken leg. He's through new, like 10, 11 surgeries. He's been through it all. He's been away for two years, but now... He may not be the starter, at least out of the gate, according to the coach. But he he's going to play this year, especially... I don't trust Wayne Haskins. Your comeback player of the year is going to be Alex Smith. And he's going to surprise everyone. He's going to be that amazing story we're going to be able to watch years down the line. And he's going to be a guy that you're going... He's probably going to give a speech. And I'm probably going to cry listening to his speech. And sitting here I'm in the crying sound right music. now, Ross. I'm... I'm crying on the inside, man. <laughs> it's, but it's, here's, the, here's the thing is... It's remarkable. It just... If we can focus on... He almost died. That's no... That, I'm not, like, being, like, over dramatic right there. He was almost dead. He is an impossible guy to root against. I mean, it is... It's similar to if Ryan Shazier all of a sudden comes back and is now the starting middle linebacker on the Steelers again. It was that bad of an injury. If you don't I mean, like him, you're the devil. I agree. I agree. And, and it's just one of those things where, you know, he's got the talent. He was a number one overall pick. The Niners drafted him above Aaron Rodgers. I think, you know, obviously they would, they would have loved to go back on that pick. But he's got the talent. He's so, so smart. The one thing is, does Washington have enough weapons for him to be able to get that success this year? That's one thing. Yep. And that's that's. But I do like Ron Rivera. Yeah, I love Ron Rivera. Like I said about any person, why I don't have um, anyone, why I don't have uh, Chase as my defensive rookie of the year, is because Mm -hmm. I just don't trust anything Washington football team related. 
Yeah. Just I agree. I mean, it's except just, for Alex it Smith. I just love Alex Smith. The Washington football team does not roll off the tongue. <laughs> it just doesn't. And oh, Dan Snyder, I think I think if, if Alex Smith was on any if if Alex Smith was on any different team, he would be even more likable. If Alex Smith was on the team that your presumed comeback player of the year is going to be, that's a lot of success right there. But your pick for comeback player of the year is a man that has a lot to prove, a lot of people to prove wrong, and he is on the way to doing that. I'm seeing a trend here in this uh, comeback player of the year discussion. These guys are number one overall draft picks. They are coming back from a year where they were injured, where they were somewhat forgotten. They were on new teams now. Cam Newton could not have dreamt up a better situation no. to fall into. He's on a one-year deal with a coach like Bill Belichick who just got rid of Tom Brady, who's Mr. All-World, and Coach Belichick, everyone's saying, oh, they're tanking for Trevor Lawrence. They're tanking to get a good quarterback. Bill Belichick doesn't When tank. was the last time Bill, El- Bill Belichick ever thought about losing a football game? Never. No, doesn't and Cam Newton is gonna Cam Newton is going to come in to a team with a great defense, a great coaching staff, doesn't have great weapons, but they just drafted two tight ends. <laughs> yeah, with his weapons. I is, love – you've seen the video. I he makes these wide receivers look so small. That dude, Cam Newton's huge. He's, he's a Cam monster. Newton is an absolute <laughs> unit. I mean, that guy is a monster. He is the best goal line quarterback we have ever seen. I think, um, I mean. Oh, oh great I point. Mean, those... So if Tom Brady, we know, Tom Brady had, sorry to cut you off there, but Tom yeah, Brady had it. a lot of success in the quarterback sneak for whatever mm-hmm. reason. And he's not the biggest guy or the most athletic guy we can say. But now, I put that on Bill Belichick. He was successful in that, a little more successful with other things, but Bill Belichick was a big key for that. Now, if you have a team that's that good quarterback sneaks and you have the biggest quarterback in the game right now, mm-hmm. that's a cheat code. <laughs> and you also have continuity. Josh McDaniels has been there since forever, mm-hmm. and you just throw Cam Newton into this offense. And, I mean, I'm sorry, but Jared Siddham and Brian Hoare are not – Putting any sort of back I mean, pressure Cam Newton, on, Cam on the day Newton recording this is the third. We're a week away from football, and Cam Newton was only just announced as a starting quarterback today. Yeah. And I um, were you surprised with the quarterback room with Brian Hoyer and Jared Statham? I kind of, I kind of saw this coming, but <laughs> I think everyone did. But but it, I I think it's also one of those things where Cam also now has got something to prove. I mean, this man was an MVP of the NFL only a couple years ago. People got forget cut about that. By his hometown team. Got cut. cut. Nobody wanted to trade cut. for him. The Panthers didn't want him. They wanted to bring in Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Two Gloves, and now Cam Newton <laughs> sitting here like that's the guy that's replacing me. Now I'm gonna go to a Super Bowl winning team two years ago and I have Bill Belichick behind my side and I have a one year deal, something to prove. I mean everything is in the tea leaves right now for Cam Newton to have a big, big year. Now, if you want to pair up an angry quarterback with Emperor Palpatine-esque Bill Belichick, the hooded one, that's that's those are two dudes. I mean, Bill Belichick has nothing to prove, but he still coaches every game like he has a world-sized chip on his shoulder. And Cam Newton is going to be playing with that same. And so I... Uh, I might not think the Patriots are going to do well. We'll find out here in a couple minutes, I guess. But um, if they get going, they can get going. That I might agree. be scary. I agree. And now, cap off the awards, we're going to end things with our coach of the year. And I am going to go with the guy that has a lot of pieces. On paper, they should be really good. It just depends on how well he's able to put them all together. It depends on what his scheme is. It depends on... I guess how we how we schemes for the teams that are going to be playing base is a tough division, but I really think that Bruce Arians has he he has a lot he can do this year, and I think he'll be the coach of the year. I mean, I I think he's got everything set up for him to make a run in the NFC South. I mean, he's got the quarterback now. He's got two all-world receivers. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans are incredible. He's got two tight ends that are, you know, two, two of the, the the best tight ends that you could draw up on either side right now. you got Gronk 
you got O.J. Howard. O.J. Howard was the sixth overall pick only a couple years ago. Gronk is the best tight end in NFL history. I'm really and Cameron Braid. All he does is catch touchdowns. Yeah, I'm kind of hesitant on Gronk because it, it he has I, a I lot of too. upside. I am but too. But also, I think he has a pretty low floor as well. But if and you could say that for the Bucks, they have a low floor, but they also have a high ceiling. It all. But here's on here's here's the thing with Gronk is. You're not expecting Gronk to be the number one, number two option. He's Gronk, not going to be. I don't think anyone's expecting. He could be Gronk the, the be number back. five option on this team and produce. How stupid you have is Mike that? Evans, How Chris Godwin, OJ Howard. You just brought in Leonard Fournette, who was the number four overall draft pick only a couple years ago, and now you just okay, Gronk. Yeah, go ahead, play twenty percent of the snaps in the red zone. Go catch a couple seam passes over the middle, and. That's your that's your third tight end. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? They just drafted so Tristan Wirfs to be on the left side of the Wirfs tackle. Is, the left was side one of the my line favorite too. guys in, in, in or the right the side of the line. Too. Excuse me, but it's one of my favorites. He's a yeah. I mean, and and their defense too. Their defense was was incredible last year, and their quarterback turned it over thirty five plus times. <laughs> thirty five plus times, and some okay. Tom Brady is not what he used to be. He's not even close. I don't think he can push the ball down the field anymore. But two things that he does. He is the smartest quarterback in the NFL, and it's not close. And he does not turn the ball over. He's two a safe things, passer. He's a safe passer. Two things that Jameis Winston is a lot of things. One thing, not the brightest bulb, or not the sharpest tool in the shed, and he loved to turn the ball over. What, is he Just loved he, uh, to do it. Is it because he was doing some weird stuff with the Uber driver or because he stole crab legs? Or all the above. or because he couldn't see. Ah, oh, one of those. Well, see, he pick thought, your pick your poison. There. He thought the crab legs were free. Okay, he he thought he, he saw he thought he saw a free sample um, um, sign. Um, um, um. <laughs> eat those, eat the W. Oh, that's still on the worst. Eat it, eat it. The W's taste good. Oh my uh, gosh, thank so God cringe. they have Drew Brees for the for the pregame so speeches and, and not not that guy. At least you know, Drew Brees amazing pregame speeches makes me want to run through a wall. Agreed. But I love it and. You're hot on this team in your power rankings. We're all worried about this team, and this is a great pick for your coach of the year. Oh my gosh! I mean, it was something to prove those, too. Something to this prove. This is this is this is one of those faces where you look at him and you just you you really just you see him and you just automatically don't like him. I mean, <laughs> Mike McCarthy is one of those faces that just really bothers me. <laughs> it's just something about him. It's nothing that he did, nothing that he can do. He can't guy. improve it. Know. Can't change it. But his face just bothers me. But I think he is the face of the coach of the year this year because, you know, he went back in his lab all of 2019. I went in and I went and did all the analytics. I checked all the trends, brought in all my numbers, guys. And now you're just inserting him with an extremely pass-heavy offense that he ran in Green Bay. And you just throw in Dak Prescott with Gallup, with C.D. Lamb, with – Amari Cooper with Blake Jarwin with the best offensive line in the NFL with Zeke Elliott with Tony Pollard is, is looked at as a backup running back, which he is. But when Tony Pollard was at Memphis, he was a big play back out of the backfield in the slot, running jet sweeps, running orbit motions. He is a Swiss army knife. And I think he's going to be able to be used in other ways than just out of the backfield this year. And I think Mike McCarthy has the defense this year. He's got the continuity on the offensive side with Kellen Moore sticking around. You don't have Jason Garrett anymore. You don't have the clapper. I mean, every single time, doesn't matter if he oh. if Dak threw a pick, if they just lost the game in the last play of the game or blow a team out by 40. So bad. Just the dude. clap. That just was the clap. The worst. Slow clap every single year. One of the worst coaches in the NFL, but – made a really smart decision in befriending Jerry Jones. We'll see. But they still have Kellen Moore on staff, too. He was exactly. iffy last year, but it was his first time. Still a super young guy, too. But, but here's the thing Mike with McCarthy Kellen Moore is him. I think he was hamstrung by Jason Garrett. If you look at, at, at Kellen Moore's first couple weeks, and, and granted, they played a horrible schedule their first couple weeks, mm-hmm. but he unleashed Dak. He had a very good offense the first couple weeks, and then Jason Garrett, whenever something got – you know, didn't go their way. Tight Keister, Jason Garrett said, okay, let's just run the ball 20, 25, 28 times. I think McCarthy could make Kellen Moore at least enable, maybe not make him, but enable him to be one of the better play callers. <laughs> I agree. And, and I think also just 
something that's very, very small, but a sneaky thing that the Dallas Cowboys did that I love this year is the Dallas Cowboys play in a dome. They play eight games in a dome and they just brought in a kicker that can kick the ball 800 yards. I think anytime they get over the 50 yard line, they're in field goal range with Greg Zerline. Greg the leg in a dome on AstroTurf in the Cowboys stadium can kick the ball from wherever he wants to. And you don't have the issue anymore with Dan Bailey. You don't have the issue anymore with missed field goals in the playoffs. And the good thing it's been is- the losses for, you've had Tony Romo having to hold the snap too. I know. And the good thing is about the coach of the year, race is this is a regular season award not a postseason award so <laughs> when the cowboys go 12 and 4 13 and 3 this year i think he's he's going to be the front runner for the coach of the year ultimately to maybe lose but i love how you segue it's like you're you're just a natural at this alex aren't you because we will segue 50th now. anniversary 50th podcast man this is, sometimes a magic game. just happens it's just what happens okay bring your a game because now we get to the real me because we get to your main event of the evening we get our NFL playoff predictions and Super Bowl winner. So as we bring up all of our amazing brackets, oh man, uh, let me, would you, uh, let, let's, okay, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to start off with our conference cha- um, standings, okay? okay? And then we're going, uh, going to go into our playoff brackets. Sound good? Okay, sounds all good. Right. So I'm just going to go. Um, I'll say them from 7th to 1 in the AFC. With the record, I have the Steelers at number 7, 9 and 7. Colts okay. at 6, 9 and 7. Number 5, the Broncos, 9 and 7. Number 4, the Texans, you guessed it, 9 and 7. Uh, 3, the Bills at 11 and 5. The Chiefs at 2, and then the Ravens at 1, 13 and 3, and 13 and 3. Both 10 2 in the conference. Um, the, the website we both use, the one that most people use is playoffpredictors.com. So, um, it's just, um, decides strength of schedule and stuff like that goes into it, but they're pretty much tied, mm-hmm. but that's what I got. What is okay. your conference? So for the AFC, I'm in, in somewhat of an agreement there. Mm-hmm. One thing that I, I just, I cannot stand behind is I, I don't think the Texans are going to be good at all this year. I mm-hmm. don't trust that offense anymore they have three receivers that are professional at getting hurt every single year and deshaun watson is incredible Mm -hmm. but his skill position players right now are nothing to write home about i think the defense is not that great bill o'brien is not a good coach and they're going to struggle this year so right now the way i have it is i think the broncos are going to sneak into the seventh seed i think the steelers are going to be the sixth seed and the records on them um, well, now you got to make me really go into uh, yeah. doing some, uh, Dude. some research here. Um, okay. So <laughs> the, the, yeah, so the Broncos, I believe are going to be seven and nine and sneak into the playoffs. Wow. They're going to get blessed wow. by the, by the seventh edition. Damn. And, and, and you know, you know, here's, here's what I think is going to play into this is I think the top heavy teams are going to be really good. And I think the bad teams are going to be really bad. Mm. So I think there's going to be very, very um, high, you know, 12, 13, 14 win teams at the top, and then, gotcha. you know, two, three, four win teams at the bottom. So I think seven and nine is able to sneak in this year. Mm. Um, I, I believe that the Steelers are going to sneak in to the sixth seed with a nine and seven record. I think that the, uh, the Patriots are going to be the fifth seed this year. They're going to have a 10 and six record. I think they're going to be able to beat up on their division. The Jets and the Dolphins are not good teams. I think no. that's four easy wins for them right there. I hey, but you Titans... never know. Week 17, Miami Dolphins in Miami against oh, the Patriots gosh, always started on that game. Always goes wrong for the Patriots. <laughs> that is just, I mean, that is one of the most abysmal losses you can have as a team there. But I, I think you're going to have a match, a rematch of the Patriots and Titans in the first round with the Titans getting the four seed at nine and seven this year. They're going to win the division. I think the AFC South is going to be a very, very bad division. Um, I think that the third seed this year is going to be the Bills. I think they're going to win the AFC East, mm-hmm. and I think they're going to be able to edge out the Patriots with a late season win mm-hmm. against them. I think that the Chiefs are going to get the two seed because I think the Ravens are going to benefit from having a pseudo home game against them. The Ravens yeah. are going to get the one seed, and that is my playoff bracket, and I am sticking to it. All right, now we go to the NFC. The NFC yep. was a little more interesting for me, given how the seedings went. Um, mm-hmm. But th- this one was a little more fun. Unfortunately, okay. 
I had the Bucks. Um, they didn't make the playoffs. They were eight and nine and seven, and so they barely wow. missed out. But from wow. seven, I have. I told you, the Dark Horse, the Arizona Cardinals make it at eight and eight. Then I got the, or sorry, nine seven, nine seven, mm-hmm. and then at six, I got the Vikings at ten and six, okay. five, the Seahawks at twelve and four, number four, I have the Packers at ten and six. I'm not a huge fan of the AFC North, uh, or sorry, the NFC North, but um, the the Packers barely had like one game more than the Vikings when it comes to conference. That's why they won the division instead of the Vikings, even though they had the same record. In number three, I have the Cowboys at twelve and four. In number two, I have the Niners at thirteen and three, and then the Saints in number one at thirteen and three. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so, you know, to, to differ a little bit from that standpoint, mm-hmm. I think the NFC is significantly better than the AFC this year. And and just to kind of to show that point, See, I, I have a couple better, but I would say they're more competitive. I think they're deeper. I think they're much yeah, deeper. They're not as top heavy. That's I think the two best teams in the NFL are the Chiefs and the Ravens. Mm-hmm. And I think that the next five, six teams in the NFC. NFL come from the NFC. Yeah. I think that barely, barely missing the playoffs this year, I have the Rams at nine and seven, mm. finishing ninth. I have the Eagles at 10 and six, missing the playoffs this year. I have. The Packers finishing 10th at nine and seven. The Packers are the fakest 13 and three team in the history of the NFL. So you're I saying don't think the, in like, I think in all the years, um, or at least for a while now, there's mm-hmm. at least been one team from the last year's conference championships that have not made the playoffs. Your pick is the Packers. Green Bay is that team. Green Bay is that team. Definitely. I think that, I, agree. I, I just think that they didn't do enough in the off season to create a difference between the other teams. Were you saying NFC. Jordan Love, trading up for Jordan Love in the first round wasn't the great I mean, way to build up the team? Don't get me started on that one, but how <laughs> dumb do you have to be to have an all-world quarterback who's on his last legs, but he's still got two, three years left. Mm-hmm. You have nobody on the outside besides Devontae Adams. You don't have a tight end. You don't have a great offensive line, and you're going to not only draft a quarterback in the first round, Creed but up. you're going to trade – up to draft a quarterback see, in the was, first round that's see, not going to play. We're talking about this. I wasn't mad about them drafting Jordan Love. I wasn't really mad about that. Um, at least at that time, because they didn't do anything um, in the second through everything else. But it was a trading up that really irked see, me. Why are you giving up assets to trade for a guy that's not going to play for you in two to three years? A guy that are could you trying to, to win the, a Super Bowl or not? You mean a guy that could are make you? it to the second round anyway? Agreed, agreed. And I think there could have been a lot of people that could help that team. Mm-hmm. So those are my teams that I have missing the playoffs. Okay. I have as the seventh seed and the sixth seed from the same division. I got the Bucks and the Falcons both finishing ten and six, Ooh. finishing seven and six in the NFC. At the five seed, I do have the Seahawks in a similar fashion as last year. They're gonna finish eleven and five. Okay, five. They're gonna narrowly miss the division and they're gonna be the fifth seed. The fourth seed this year, I have the Vikings. I think the Vikings mm. are the most complete team in the NFC North. I think they're going to beat up on that division. I think that with Cook coming back, Cook's, Cook's gonna, not going to hold out. And the getting Ngakwe, is, too. That was they, they just got Ngakwe. I think that's huge because they lost Everson Griffin, so mm-hmm. they needed to replace him with Ngakwe. Um, I, I think that Stephon Diggs losing him is not going to be that huge of a deal. I think Justin Jefferson is a very good replacement. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're going to be able to run a 12 personnel with Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph extremely effectively. Um, I think that the, they just have a very deep team, a very consistent team. Kirk cousins is not going to do anything in the playoffs, but he's going to have a good Mm -hmm. regular season. They're going to go 10 and six. They're going to win that division. I think the third seed this year is going to be the Saints at 12 and four. They're going to just do what they do every single year they have Drew Brees. They're going to win a lot of games. They're going to put up a lot of points. They're going to beat up on bad teams, and they're going to be competitive in the in the, in the the teams that they play that, that are mm-hmm. also having winning records. I think your, your second seed is going to be the Niners. They're going to be able to repeat. They're going to have a good season. They have an extremely high four with a good defense and a good running game in that coaching staff, and your number one team in the NFC is going to be the Dallas Cowboys. They have the most talent on the offensive end 
and I don't think it's that close. Besides from the quarterback position, Mm -hmm. they have a better player at every position than the Chiefs. Excuse me, besides Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. But every single other position, their offensive line is significantly better. Significant. Amari Cooper is not that far off from Tyreek Hill. Mm-hmm. C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup are significantly better than their other two receivers. I think Blake Jarwin's actually pretty underrated at Oklahoma State. He was mm-hmm. a part of a pretty high-flying offense. An athletic guy, had good rapport with Dak. I think Jason Witten getting out of there was maybe the best thing that they could do. Yes. Tony Pollard, like I said is going to be a weapon out of the backfield, not just a backup running back. And you have one of the best and most consistent runners in the NFL in Zeke Elliott. Mm-hmm. Feed Zeke. Feed Zeke. Feed um, Zeke. I, I really I like that. And now we can move on to the wild card. And so okay. my in, in the NFC, my matchups are the five Seahawks um, at the four Packers, six Vikings at the three Cowboys, and then seven Cardinals at the two Niners. I have the okay. Seahawks – Taking uh, the Seahawks being the the Packers, and Vikings Cowboys is interesting because you have a team that always likes to choke in the playoffs, and then you also have a team that always likes to pull the upset and just somehow win the game in the playoffs. So that's why I chose the Vikings off of history to beat the Cowboys. I have the and then I have the Niners, of course, being the Cardinals because uh, okay, so I mean, come on, it's they're being the Cardinals. Then I mean, on, the come a, on. on the AFC. It's going to be the five Broncos against the four Texans, six Colts against the three Bills, and seven Steelers against the two Chiefs. The Texans only won the division because it's going to be a fairly weak division, probably the weak, maybe the weakest in the league. We'll see. So the Broncos beat the Texans. The Bills beat the Colts, and then the Chiefs, of course, uh, they will beat the Steelers. Okay. I like it. You're welcome. I like it. I will uh, I'll rattle it off here. In the NFC, I have the five-seed Seahawks beating the four seed Minnesota Vikings mm. in a rematch of last year. Um, okay. Not well, a hey, shout out to, shout out to one of my uh, f- friends of the show, Ryan Schilling. Um, we, we, the, the wide left was all I need to hear. Shout out to Blair Walsh. Oh, poor. Oh I feel so bad for oh Ryan. Oh my poor gosh. Vikings Blair fans. Walsh. Blair Walsh has had a, has had a tough upbringing. Blair Walsh, man. Um, poor and guy. then uh, going forward, I have the three seed. Fal- or the three seed Saints beating up on the division rivals, six seed Falcons. Mm. I have the Niners in the uh, the Tom Brady Bowl beating the Tampa Bay Bucks, the seven seed Tampa Bay Bucks. Mm-hmm. I have in the AFC switching gears. There, I have the five seed New England Patriots exacting their revenge on the the Mike Vrabel led Tennessee Titans wow. in that five four matchup. I have the uh, okay. the Buffalo Bills beaten up, and this this game could finish seven to six against the Steelers, <laughs> and then I think the uh, the Chiefs are depends going on to the weather, absolute, right? So, no, of course. I mean, well, it's in Buffalo. We'll get some in Buffalo, Buffalo <laughs> in February. Not going to be <laughs> very conducive to good weather, but the Chiefs are going to absolutely obliterate the Broncos in the wild card round. See, I'm gonna sound like Homer when I say this. But it may be the divisional thing. The Broncos haven't beat the Chiefs for a while. But every time the last few matchups they've played the Chiefs, it's been a one or two possession game. So I'm just throwing I'm gonna out stop there. you there. Let's let's just be real. Throwing here. out I there. mean in in a playoff situation, <laughs> who are you taking? I'm taking the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes no, I'm or Chiefs. Drew Locke. Uh, hey, 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 let me think about hold on one second. Okay, uh, I think Patty is gonna be able to have a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah, I'm gonna go with you on that one. <laughs> okay, and 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 I I don't know if Fanny Pack Vic is gonna be able to have the juice to be able to get a playoff win this year. I I guess I'll have my fingers crossed. Now we get yeah. to move on into the divisional round, where things get a little more interesting. Uh, in the AFC side, out of the three Bills and the two Chiefs and the five Broncos and the one Ravens, and it goes exactly the way you think it might go. Chiefs and Ravens advance. I'm not going to I'm not going to hold it up anymore. I have the Chiefs beating the Bills and the Ravens beating the Patriots. Yeah. Not that hard in the AFC this not year. Not that hard. The Chiefs and the Ravens are significantly the two best teams and they're going to win and face each other in the AFC Championship. And now it might be interesting more on the NFC side. I know you mm. you're the, the, the mm. interesting um you're the Niners fan. I know one fan of the show like I mentioned earlier Ryan Watson, Niners fan. I know a number of you guys are Niners fans as well. So uh Please don't dislike this, but um, 
hold that thought because one of the matchups is the number one Saints and the number six Vikings. The Saints get their revenge on the Vikings. They don't have anything go down in overtime. They don't have some oh tiptoe back pylon catch. And so the Saints actually do it and they actually beat the Vikings in the playoffs. That must also, be that the- was a push off, right? Yeah. <sighs> that was a push off. <laughs> I, I think Kyle Rudolph pushed off. I think he had two hands on him, but I, I digress. I you digress. Um, I, the Saints. This might be the biggest hot take of the whole show. The Saints actually beat the Vikings in the playoffs. You can hold that one. And now the other matchup is the five Seahawks and the two Niners. I got the Seahawks edging out the Niners in a very, very close, let's say, overtime game in the divisional round. Yeah, I mean, it's especially with with a divisional matchup like that, it's it's not playing for the third cra- time in a season. Yeah, it's it's not crazy to think that, but I, I mean, I think the Niners last year got extremely blessed to a get the one seed and to b not have to play the Seahawks a third mm-hmm. time in the playoffs. And so you know, it's I don't think that's going to happen, but I can see where that is in the realm of possibilities. Okay, now your NFC. So in in uh, the the one versus five matchup, I think the Dallas Cowboys absolutely obliterate the Seattle Seahawks. They put the old adage of the Cowboys <laughs> choking in the playoffs to bed for at least this round. At least for this at least round. this round, I think they obliterate the Seahawks. I think they're just talented at every position besides the quarterback position, and I mm-hmm. think that's even extremely close. I think Dak and Russell have a similar skill set. Dak hasn't shown it obviously, but I think he's got enough help around him to be able to edge out the Seahawks in the the divisional round. And then I think in the three versus two matchup in a rematch of the most epic play that I've ever seen out of George Kittle, I think the saints are able to beat the Niners in the divisional round. I hate saying it, but Alex, I am very proud of you for, for making that decision. It's hard. It's really hard to do, but (laughs) it's, it's hard to get back to the, the Super Bowl as as the Niners this year and and you know why they do have a chance they have a very very high floor this year mm-hmm. I don't know if they have the talent on the outside unless they make a trade to be able to compete with the offense that the Saints do that's v- very very fair now yeah. conference championships one of the best weekends of the league uh, of the season oh, in the I'm so excited for it oh my gosh it's the so AFC cool still we get the one versus two matchup of the Ravens and the Chiefs. And the Ravens, hey, who knows? Late in January, knock on wood, we might have fans in stadiums, so this might change things. The weather, well, both them play in bad weather, so hardly affect. But I got the home team Ravens edging Big out the trust. Chiefs. Big, Big trust. Big trust. And it's because it's not going to be – they're going to help. It's not going to be Lamar Jackson in the game. It's not going to be Andrews in the game. It's not going to be Hollywood Brown. It's going to be Justin Tucker walking off against the Chiefs because no, he has man. ice is in his veins. and he Is this the matchup play. of the two best kickers in the NFL? <laughs> no, because um, Young Hoku is, is the best oh, kicker. Man. Young Hui Ku. <laughs> Sorry, Come on. Yeah. You got it. Put some respect on Bro. this man's name. Okay, Young Kwe Not Koo, mess with Young Kwe. As, it doesn't sound as cool. Young Koku is just the best. Well, also, shout out to him because when's the last time you've seen someone, especially on the stage of the Thanksgiving game, kick back-to-back successful on, onside kicks? Doesn't happen. I mean, do you also throw back to also when uh, when Young Kwe Koo kicked a field goal in the process of doing a backflip? Right. How do you do that? <laughs> I mean uh, that's that's sorcery? one of the most unreal Magic. things that's ever that's ever been been caught on film. <laughs> it's so stupid, but I got the Ravens barely edging out against the Chiefs in what's going to be an all-time classic NFL conference championship game that I could rewatch for decades. That's yeah, my I, prediction right there. But then the NFC, one Saints, five Seahawks. This is going to be a very interesting matchup, but it might be. It might be just too much for that Seahawks defense to handle. The Saints get the victory in that in advance of the Super Bowl. Well, real, real bold take there, having the one seed versus the one seed play each shut other up. in the Super Bowl. It just goes down Crazy, well. man. No, shut I'm up. You, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you in the NFC side. I, I think that the Cowboys made a great run, but 
I think the experience of the Saints and the experience of Sean Payton, and they've just been screwed too many times in the playoffs for it to not even out a little bit. I think they're going to get to the Super Bowl this year, and I think they're going to be playing the Chiefs. Mm. I think the Chiefs are just too good. I think that the Ravens are a great regular season team. They mm-hmm. have, they're going to have what it takes to get one win in the playoffs. But when you go against Patrick Mahomes, you cannot put enough separation to feel good in that game. No. And he is just going to be able to pick apart that defense and get to the Super Bowl again. Mm. Very. Yeah, that's totally reasonable right there. Mm -hmm. And now the Super Bowl matchup, your matchup is I'm going to have you make your Super Bowl pick first. Go ahead. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's Pressure's just on. one of those one of those guys again. Just you know, Chiefs are playing the Saints, and the Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl again because they have the best player to ever play in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, it's just it, there's a reason why Patrick Mahomes got paid five hundred million dollars five hundred for, for ten years. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So Every time it comes out of my mouth, five hundred million dollars, and he's underpaid still. He's still underpaid. <laughs> it's so stupid. And, and and we're we're talking about this before we started the podcast, but I mean. You could have given any him any amount of money, and he's still underpaid. He is that good of a Patrick quarterback. Patrick Mahomes becomes the first billionaire contract deal. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But he's he's too good. Patrick Mahomes def- and, and, and Lee were given the contract. It's just given sole ownership of the Kansas City Chiefs. Still underpaid. <laughs> still underpaid. Still underpaid. But I mean, I think it's 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 not not a hot take. Not nothing. It's just chalk city. But the mm-hmm. Chiefs are too good. That's nothing wrong with that. My thing is, is that it's very hard and very rare that a team even makes it to the Super Bowl after winning it. It's a very hard thing to do, even if you have the, if you have the exact same team. It's a challenge to make it back to the Super Bowl, let alone win it. And I'm not discounting the talent. Not at all. Because they have the talent to do it this year. If everyone stays healthy, of course. Even if a few people get hurt, they still have the talent to, to do it. Because they're that good. But, yeah. I think... Drew, and Drew Brees, what would be Drew Brees' last season when this does go down? He will retire a Super Bowl champion as they knock off the Chiefs in a very explosive, highly anticipated deep, um, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, it it just writes itself. A Saints Chiefs Super Bowl would be poetry. And I would love just it. to see, I would love it. You have. In the quarterback matchup would be phenomenal because you have one of the most criminally underrated quarterbacks of all time in Drew Brees mm-hmm. against one of the best talents, maybe the best talent the NFL has ever seen, Patrick Mahomes. But mm-hmm. what's going to win this game and what ultimately wins Super Bowls is Sean Payne, Drew Brees, experience and veteran tenacity and will to win. And that defense of the Saints is going to be what ultimately puts him over the top in this game because you have the... Ravens, I mean, Justin Tucker's one thing, but the Saints, they got big nuts Lutz, okay? He's a playmaker <laughs> all on his own. One of the best nicknames in the NFL. Easily, easily. So, it might come down to a kick. might come down to a four-point game, but this the New Orleans Saints, God bless their fans because they deserve something good. They are going to be Super Bowl champions this year. Too much heartbreak to not have a... Or, even more predictable, they're going to get screwed, and the Chiefs are going to be Super Bowl champions because of a <laughs> because of an awful call. Yeah, I agree. Now, that's I mean, poetry. Both in the realm of possibility there, for sure. <sighs> but you got the Chiefs going back-to-back, ultimately. I got the Saints mm-hmm. finally going back, and they're taking a championship. But with that being said, I think this has been absolutely phenomenal from top to bottom in what better way to have a 50th anniversary show than to go back to our roots and predict the 2020, 2021, who knows what the hell is going to happen. The most interesting season we may ever have, but we mm-hmm. predicted it. And who knows, um, because hey, let's hold on, obviously, fingers crossed, it doesn't, might never get a full season, might have some wonky stuff happen, but mm-hmm. that's just the fun of uh, this world we live in, Alex, isn't it? <laughs> I agree. I mean, there's there's nothing that can be left to be unexpected anymore. And the only thing that gives me any sort of solace right now is knowing that a week from today, recording this podcast, we are going to be watching live NFL football 
from the reigning Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Houston Texans. I say the school for the week. I'm going to get off of work, and I'm just going to go to my TV. Hell, I might even grab a... Uh, I might even put a bowl of chips next to me. A little, little chips and salsa. Wow. Hell. hell. Don't I'm, go too crazy there, see, Ross. It, it might be cut season, but you know, I might have to get that pizza. might have to get some wings or something. Wow. Do the whole watch. works. I'm, uh, okay, I'll just run five miles that morning to, to counteract it. It'll be all good. <laughs> but we're going to watch some good old-fashioned foosball, Alex, and... Oh, it feels so good to say that. It There's feels good. Just the smile. It feels good. It's what we needed. <laughs> it's what America needs. America. It's what, every, it's what everyone needs. America runs on Duncan, and America runs on football. And, <laughs> and Alex, it's been a great time having you on for the first time. You didn't do too shabby. Who knows? Hey. You might. I, I was honestly, I was a little nervous. Hey, this might not be the only time we hear your voice on the show. Let me just leave it at that, okay? Hey, don't don't leave the fans in too much anticipation there. You got to, got to. And then my plug before we leave is that for all the fo- footy fans, Australian football. I know Alex, you're a fan of that too. That I, I just am, I am. Hey, shout out to GWS Giants making back up in ladder. Hey, they're not choking yet, so there's still hope. But no. all you great great fo- footy fans that have really taken in flocks to the show, really upped our views and um, lashed on um, recently. Love you guys. And so, so to celebrate, the uh, the tweet that I put out that got me into footy was just pretty simple, the most underrated sport in the world. And so Agreed. we Charlie got, Dixon, best player in the, in the AFL, and also the footy is underrated, the most entertaining sport to watch on TV or live. I would highly recommend it. Fox Sports 1, Fox Sports 2, hey, Fox Sports Thursday two nights, Friday morning, nights, Saturday yeah. nights. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> nothing, nothing better, better than to that. fall asleep to. And that is American. You can watch out the lone American in there. Mason Cox. Coxzilla. Okay. He's a 6'10 freak of nature, and he's wrecking stuff down in the land down under. But I have a special T-shirt that we are releasing on Friday, the day that this show goes wow. live. New T-shirt. Footy is underrated. It's going to be a blast. Check that out. It's it's going to be a great time coming out of t-shirts and tank tops because it's still summer. Okay. It's not oh, yeah. fall Sun's yet. out, guns out, baby. Got, got to get them. Also, still flexing. This shirt and everything else you see and the little thing behind me available on our shop. You know I had to get all them plugs in because, oh, man, oh, yeah. I'm a... I'm a bit of a uh, you-know-what for money, okay? <laughs> An entrepreneur is what they call them. Okay. That's my professional title, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find us everywhere in YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you can find your podcast, www.thefourthandlong.com. You find everything at that great website. Alex, it's been a blast. Um, can we find, you got a Twitter? Uh, I, I do. Uh, do you Alexander use your Prop. Twitter? I don't use my Twitter. Do you got so Instagram? <laughs> don't feel free to follow me on Instagram <laughs> at Alexander Crop. Uh, throwing some good content out there. My beautiful new uh, golden doodle puppy Allie. I know it's a sibling of Ross's family's puppy. Hey, shout my boy Binks, my homie Binks. Binks, sir. I mean, <laughs> I mean that man is an absolute stud. So go feel free to go check out that content. Um, just uh, everyone go out there. Just do me one favor enjoy nfl this year enjoy next week and it's been a pleasure being on with you ross that's episode 50 in the books that is the 2020 2021 super bowl, um, nfl preview in the books and let's see just how right we are because of course we're experts but ladies and gentlemen i appreciate you all for watching appreciate you for sticking around for 50 episodes and oh, yeah. we will catch you guys in the next one and just one week away from recording this it's some football let's oh, yeah. do the football.